and I pick off my It is an absolutely beautiful night for football in Columbia, Missouri. Temperature in the 70s is number 22. Michigan State set to take on the Tigers, who need a great defensive performance, especially from number 96, Justin Smith. With more on him, the third member of our broadcast team, here's Eric Clemens. All right, Ron, thank you very much. You know, the Michigan State offense poses enough size and talent to challenge just about any opposing defense, but Mizzou might have an answer in the All-America candidate, Justin Smith. 6'5", 270, benches 500 pounds. He runs a 4'5", 40, had a great freshman season, a better sophomore season, but the coaches need more from him this year. He tends to play up or down to his level of competition. Two weeks ago against Western Illinois, only three total tackles. Last Last week against Clemson, 13 total tackles. Larry Smith needs some big plays from Justin Smith and the rest of that Mizzou defense to have a good shot tonight, guys. All right, Eric, you'll be able to stay cool tonight, and we are set for the opening kickoff of tonight's game with Michigan State. David Schaefer, who has been kicking it well as of late, and he will boot it out of the end zone. So Missouri will take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Missouri. Michigan State won the toss and deferred, which is almost playing into Missouri's hands, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. Of course, Michigan State defense wanting to see what this offense will do, and of course, the offense led by Kirk Farmer. Dad played quarterback here at Missouri from 69 to 71. Line shuffled during the spring. Globerman will be at left tackle. Strongest part of their offense, wide receivers. Here's the first strange thing. Four players to the left. They swing it off to the left side. Pass is complete to Travis Garvin. And he picks up a first down. We thought the first three or four plays would be weird, and they start out weird. We have a flag. And where the flags are thrown, you'd almost think that had someone had too many men on the field. It's illegal participation by the Spartans. They saw that wild formation, and 12 guys ran out on the field. They couldn't decide whether it was a regular package or a nickel package that should be on the football field. Dick Honig, our referee, and here, of course, Missouri now will have the ball first and ten. Dick Honig, the referee. And they don't look like they're going to be using any kind of a huddle. Let's listen in to Dick. Illegal participation on the defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, first down. Larry Smith refused to tell us yesterday and offensive coordinator Bill Cubitt what they were doing in those first three or four plays, but he said, gentlemen, it will be un-Missouri-like. Well, I went to the drawing board and drew something up that was kind of a sandlot, and he kind of smirked. Bill Cubitt is not a great poker player, but they've devised a system that they think is going to work early on in this ballgame. Well, now they have one ride receiver to the left, one lone setback. Zane Gilmore in the backfield. Spencer goes in motion. He's got the football up to the 40-yard line. A pickup of five on the play. Cedric Henry came up from the left cornerback to make the stop. Let's take a look at that Michigan State defense expecting Missouri to run the ball. The key is their front four. Left tackle Jay Saylor could be on the way to all-conference honors. Linebackers Nick Myers moves from defensive end to the Sam spot. Defensive backs Hill and Henry at corner. Richard Newsom will be in in a lot of plays. They stack three wide receivers to the left. Garvin and Spencer joined by Justin Gage. They swing it out. The pass will be incomplete. Right in front of Travis Garvin, the 6'1 sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida. Kirk Farmer, of course, last year in Game 5 versus Iowa State, broke his leg. We had that game here on Fox Net. It was a nasty injury. And technically, this is the second half of this freshman year as far as football is concerned. It really is, and, and he has a lot of learning to do, but they feel like this kid is really going to progress well. Third down, we'll call it five. Gilmore in motion. Three wide receivers to the left. Michigan State brings five. Pass intended. For their tight end, Dwayne Blakely overthrown. Fans wanted pass interference. Fans always want pass interference. There's Bill Miller, the defensive coordinator. You know, when we talked to him yesterday, he said that Larry Smith is a smash mouth type of guy that he wants to hit you in the face and come after you. I think that Larry Smith has pulled a fast one on these guys with the way that they started this ball game. And Missouri will be forced to kick. You see the numbers on Jared Gilpin. Versus Clemson, he had a punt block. He had a 24-yard kick. And this has been a sore spot for Missouri over the last couple of years. This time, good snap. Gets it away under heavy pressure. 
Sean Foster from his eight. Up to the 15, and he is going to be swarmed. A 54-yard kick, about seven on the return. Yeah, the Michigan State offense, 433 yards last week versus Marshall. They will be having a true freshman at quarterback, Jeff Smoker. A touchdown pass and an interception last week, but he showed a great deal of poise for a freshman. Good size between the tackles. Everybody's a senior except left tackle sophomore Eulish Booker. And the coaches, as far as the wide receivers are concerned, they want more production. Keep an eye on Chris Baker. Lavelle Richardson and Herb Haygood, the two wide receivers, split to the near side. Duck it from the tailback spot. On first and ten, play action pass. Smoker going up into the flat. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Herb Haygood, the junior out of Sarasota, Florida. And the Missouri defense, they have to stop the big play. They've already given up nine plus 20-yard plays this year. It begins with the line, Harden and Smith on the outside, McNushi and McCamey on the inside. Linebackers will have their hands full against Duckett today. Secondary, Julian Jones and Clarence Jones, no relation. They are the leaders of the defense. On second and 10, our first look at Mr. Duckett. Up to the 20. Breaks the tackle to the 22-yard line. Clarence Jones had to wrap him up, and you can see what Duckett did last week as opposed to what Missouri has done in two games. You know, I'm still looking at those Duckett numbers. He had 185 yards in the second half last week. That means he only had 34 at halftime, so the jury was still out on this guy. Granted, he had a great freshman year where he was more of a fill-in back but he really got things going in the second half. He didn't wear people down, he just outran them because you look at his body, you think he's gonna pound his run, but he has four, four speed in the 40, and you will see it tonight. Now we see Chris Baker, the tight end, go to the right side. Smoker rolling out, buying some time. This bothered Missouri versus Clemson, but not today. James, that was a play that Clemson really just assaulted that Missouri defense with that sprint out pass. And, and that time you have good coverage down the field. You see Larry Smith on the sideline, but excellent coverage down the field. The pursuit by Doyle, the defensive line, all after Smoker. But it starts with the coverage downfield. There was nowhere to throw the football, thus you get the sack. And that'll force Michigan State to punt. Greg Jarrett had two punts blocked last week. Standing in his own end zone, Eric Spencer back for Missouri. He is on his own 42-yard line. Good snap, line drive kick, it's a spiral. Spencer has to back up and he's gonna let it go. Great kick by Jarrett. That is why he was all Big Fed Conference last year. The ball will be down at the 24-yard line. Craig Jarrett booms a 62-yarder. We're scoreless in Columbia. Columbia, Missouri, University of Missouri, along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens. I'm Ron Thulin. Perfect night for ballooning and for football. 12-37 left in a scoreless first quarter. And, and Michigan State is starting with 14 defenders on the field. Then when they see what comes out for Missouri, they run guys off. That's how they ended up with too many men on the field the first play. Three wide receivers to the right. The quick pass. They swing it out. They're looking for a halfback pass. Gage lets it go. He has a man. John Dosman tripped up at the five. Great play calling by offensive coordinators Bill Cubitt and Andy Hill. Justin Gage, number 12, is the third string quarterback. You see him behind the line of scrimmage. That ball is thrown backwards, just like the miracle pass with the Tennessee Titans at 71-yard completion. Hits the receiver in perfect stride. The one thing you don't want to do, oh, you don't want to go get caught from behind, but they have the ball in great field position. And after that great pickup, Missouri is going to burn a timeout. What a pass from Justin Gage, the 6'5 sophomore out of Jefferson City, Missouri. We expected the unusual. You called that play, though, yesterday. Let's take a look at one more time. Well, it's a great call, and we've seen this early. We saw Wyoming try it early in the season. You see the ball thrown backwards, and number 12, Justin Gage, not only is he a quarterback, but he's also the number seven player on the basketball team. He's a backup postman, so he has some athletic ability. 
and, uh, you know, he throws a tighter spiral than the quarterback. And, you know, that's not an easy pass to throw because you're throwing it directly down the field and catching a ball that comes straight over your head is tough. So a nice catch by John Dowsman. What a story. John Dowsman sat out all of last year because of the torn knee, and the offensive coordinator came over from Western Michigan, Bill Cubitt, in his first year. He's assisted by Andy Hill. Three new faces on that offensive staff. Cubitt, in his three seasons at Western Michigan, helped them to the top 25 ranking in passing and offense all three years. So he came in totally anti-Larry Smith offense, but Larry Smith has really bought into it. And you also see Cubitt in an unfamiliar position for offensive coordinators. He's down on the field because he wants to help out his young quarterback, Kurt Farmer. We talked about Farmer being a senior, but only having played, a sophomore rather, only having played five games as a freshman. So he can get down there, look in the guy's eyes, and, and calm them down and, and really relate to them when they come to the sideline. First and goal. Ball's on the six-yard line. Zane Gilmore, the lone setback. Two tight end formation. They give it to Gilmore, and he is going to be pummeled right at the line of scrimmage. Josh Thornhill, the junior out of Lansing, Michigan, delivered the first blow. And I talked about this being a boxing match, and if you're a boxer, you don't want to run straight into somebody's power. And right up the middle, Josh Thornhill, when we talked to Bill Miller, at defensive coordinator, he said, this is probably our best football player, our middle linebacker. The tackles keep the guys off of him. He's going to fill and make those plays. This is where you use Kurt Farmer and his ability to get out of the pocket, get this guy out on the perimeter, and let him make something happen. Blakely and Ford, two tight ends formation again for the Tigers. Second and goal. Farmer's trying to get to the outside. Throws across his body and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Brandon Ford, the junior out of Galveston, Texas. Get just a little too much pressure. You know when you bootleg, you're trying to get the defense to think you're going the opposite direction. But number 99, Dimitri Bernard, he knows that my position is to stay outside and contain that quarterback. It does a nice job in staying at home and then putting the pressure on Farmer. And now, five wide receivers in empty backfield. The Farmer is athletic enough and there's room up the middle. This guy may take off. Third down and goal from the eight. Farmer, plenty of time. Lost it in the corner of the end zone and it is overthrown. Intended for Eric Spencer. So the 71-yard completion from Gage to Dowsman may go for naught. Great job by Jabari Hendricks. And we talked about Farmer being being a guy who could move. Look at number 75. He's not rushing the passer. Nick Myers is saying, okay, he can't escape to the outside. We won't let him run up the middle. Bobby Williams has to be happy. You know, they come up with some gimmicks, but his guys keep him out of the end zone. And Missouri forced to kick what will be a 25-yard field goal attempt. Brad Hamrick, one for one on the year. And he remains perfect. Two for two. So Missouri, the first to put points on the board. They lead the number 22 Spartans, 3-0. The Missouri Tigers have been outscored 178 to 23 versus their last three nationally ranked teams. They put three on the board. They went 69 yards in five plays. Took them just over a minute. Was that a missed opportunity not to get the extra four points and make it a touchdown? Well, you rattle off those numbers like that. It certainly was, but they have to look at it and think, well, that's a positive. We got at least three points out of the drive. From the three-yard line, Herb Haygood has an opening lookout. And he is tripped up after an excellent return. Hamrick makes the stop for a Dr. Pepper game break. Let's go to our college football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier. Ron, third-ranked Michigan driving late against UCLA, and John Navarre, the redshirt freshman, makes a huge mistake. He's picked off by Jason Stevens. The Bruins have done it again. Now the question, guys, do they belong in the top five? I think that's a great question. I think you're not going to get an argument from anybody up here, Kevin. But UCLA has taken a, a great advantage of guys coming into their own backyard and beating up on them. Well, the first series for Michigan State, we didn't see Mr. T.J. Duckett. We finally, we only saw him once. This is his second carry. And he is going to be corralled by Cedric Harden. The 6'3", 299-pound sophomore out of Humble, Texas. 
Great job stuffing the middle. We talked in the open about making this guy shuffle his feet in the backfield. And there you see him having to run laterally. There are not a lot of good running backs who run well east and west. You always hear that old college football vernacular run north and south. Well, every field doesn't go north and south, but north and south is goal line to goal line. East and west is sideline to sideline. And running east and west won't get you a lot of reps in the ball game. Loss of six on the play. Second and 16. Smoker has some pressure, throws it out of the flat, pass is, they're going to call it incomplete. Yeah, he was juggling that. That is a nice job by the officiating crew on the sidelines. The field judge is back deep. The line judge is coming up, and he's watching the ball. The field judge will watch the feet. You can see it. There's the ball in his hands, but he doesn't have control of it. It's moving up and down his body, and a nice job by this uh, Big 12 officiating crew as they come in to make that call. That was Herb Haygood, the line judge, John Court, the field judge, Al Terry. Good job, gentlemen. Sean Foster, little John Flowers, split to the left from the shotgun, third and 16. Smoker feeling the heat, and he is going to be dropped as a penalty flag is thrown. Yeah, you had a holding. When you get great pressure like that, and that quarterback moves, the guys are holding in one direction right in front of them, and when they have to do that shift, then you're going to get a holding call, but great pressure by the Tigers. The fourth sack allowed by Michigan State this year, the ninth sack by the Tigers this season. And watch number 70 right there at the top of your screen. Well, there's Euless Booker, number 65. You can see the hook right there in the middle of your screen, and he has holding. He has Smith. Justin Smith, a great speed rusher. That speed caused the holding. Julian Jones coming from that H-back spot to come up with a sack. And young Jeff Smoker has his hands full in the first couple of series. Jarrett had a great punt. His first, plus 60 yards. You've got to field this punch. You can't let these punt mm -hmm. hit the ground. Taking their time. The snap is good. Not much of a rush and another good kick. Spencer. From his own 35, straight up the middle. Looking for some running room, crosses the 45 up to the 48-yard line, a 43-yard kick, about 13 on the return. Well, one of the headhunters for Michigan State is Demario Suggs. Here's what he did. Yeah, but when you know a guy's a headhunter, you have to account for him. And he gets drugged to the ground, and that could have easily been a holding call against the Tigers. Well, Missouri, no huddle offense. They huddle near their sideline. Now, last year, they ran the plays that Corby Jones ran two years ago. And look at the guys running off the field. Yeah. Sorry about that. These guys are getting off the field. They're lining up 14, which I think should be illegal. The offense can't do it. Why should the defense be able to do it? Well, they changed the rule offensively this year where you can't do it. Must not apply to the defense. Straight ahead running. Zach Abram, the redshirt freshman out of Wentzville, Missouri. But as I was mentioning, James, I thought it was interesting last year that the Missouri offense ran those Corby Jones plays without the Corby Jones athletes. And I think Larry Smith realized that. Yeah, you really have to tailor your offense to the personnel that you have. Look at what you have. What can we do well? Because you don't want your players struggling to try and repeat past greatness. Pick up of two on that play. Second and eight. Two wide receivers to the top of your screen. And eight. And Cubit signaling the plays right to Kirk Farmer. They're going to try the left side of the line. Abram again, maybe picked up one on the play. There's Dimitri Bernard. He's coming in. He's looking to see what's there. And what he finds is a face full of Tiger. That is not a bad block by Adrian Cole. Adrian Cole comes around and just smacks him right in the kisser. I tell you, this is one of the best teams as far as defensive run presence. Michigan State, they were fifth in the country last year in rushing yardage against. And that's a huge statement when you play in the Big Ten. Dowsman on the near side, Garvin on the left, or go up top, passes complete to the 30-yard line. Justin Gage, he throws it, he catches it, and he gets inside the 20 down to the 15. Now, we talked about Justin Gage. He's the third-string quarterback. 
He is also a backup post player on the basketball team. This looks like he's under the backboard, waiting on a rebound. He gets the rebound, shakes a couple of guys off for a 38-yard gain. Just engaged. You've seen him throw the ball. Now you've seen him catch it. He's the guy who's really stepping to the forefront in this offense. And he's a big receiver. I'd use him down in the red zone if I were Bill Cubitt. Six feet, five inches. He matches up well against those shorter Michigan State defensive backs. And again, Farmer changing the play. Abram the low setback. Looking for the option. The pitch to Zach Abram. He's got running room. Fumbles the football as he hit the ground. Let's see what the officials say. They're saying he was down after that hit by Ronaldo Hill. Now, see, when I first started playing, when you had leather helmets, the ground could cause a fumble. <laughs> now, you know, you've had so many games played on AstroTurf where that ball just started to pop yeah. out when the Oklahoma Sooners are running that option. See him, he gets hit right on the football, and you see... Yeah. He hits the ground, and that ball comes out. You get a better block on the outside by the wide receiver. You have a touchdown on that play. But a good job by Ronaldo Hill, who's the best defensive back for the Spartans. Jason Lewis, Zach Abram now in the eye formation. Second down and five. Farmer rolls right. Looking, still looking. Keeps it and slides as he goes inside the 10-yard line down to about the 8-yard line. And when Kirk Farmer runs... I think the sigh you hear is Bill Cuban and Larry Smith holding their breath. And, and Farmer wasn't really trying to slide. What Farmer was trying to do was really turn upfield. He had a lot of momentum going. We talked about him being a long strider. He's trying to get as much yardage as he can. You know, this is not the NFL where guys are thinking, you know, I got a big paycheck and I got to secure that. This is college football. You talk about intensity and emotion, and that's what's going on down on the field right now for the Tigers. Third down, about two and a half. We'll call it three. Farmer playing with a titanium rod in his leg that he broke last year versus Iowa State. Left side in the five, looking for Painter. Touchdown, Missouri! Zach Abrams' first collegiate touchdown. You know, Bill Cubitt is probably one of the more honest offensive coordinators in the league. He said, we don't have a lot of speed at running back, but these guys are really powerful, and there's Bill Cubitt. So what he has designed is an offense that's going to run right up the gut. Zach Abram, 5'10", 232 pounds, fullback style. The ball's down. The kick is good by Hamrick. And Missouri is surprising the number 22 ranked Spartans. 10 nothing is our score. Six plays, 53 yards, 322. Abram with his first career touchdown. He went seven yards, and that is why Missouri has a 10-0 lead over Michigan State. Once again, Haygood and little John Flowers back to receive the kick. A driving kick. Hey, good. Five yards deep, and he's going to take a knee. Ready for an Olbermann fix? Sunday night sports just got a whole lot better as the Keith Olbermann the Evening News airs tomorrow at 10 p.m. on Fox Sports Net. Each Sunday night, Keith provides his unique perspective on the world of sports, wrapping up the week's events and taking a look forward as to what's ahead. The Keith Oberman Evening News, tomorrow at 10 p.m. only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings for the start time in your area. I'd say he's unique. I was going to say unique <laughs> is an under... That's, that's like very saying, mild. That's like saying you're going to get a little wet from a tidal wave, isn't it? C.J. Duck at the lone setback. Spartans lacking a little bit of leadership offensively right now. Smoker swings it out. Duck it. You don't want your quarterbacks having to tackle this big guy. Antoine Duncan makes the stop, and there is Ryan Van Dyke, the junior out of Marshall, Michigan. Do they miss his leadership right now? Well, I think they really do because Bill Burke had been the quarterback in 88, 98, 99, and Van Dyke, when he was a freshman, came in. He wanted to challenge him. You can see before the game he's not putting any pressure on throwing that ball. He's even trying to catch it more so with his left hand. His right thumb hurt so bad he's chewing his left thumb. Lavelle Richardson, Herb Haygood. Wide to the near side. We still haven't seen Baker the tight end. Pass is complete to Haygood. First 
down Michigan State as he crosses the 35-yard line. Pickup of 12 on the play. That is the biggest game they've had this evening thus far. And, and now as the adrenaline wears off for the Tigers a little bit, you had the shrouded in mystery. You see the numbers on Haygood, but Missouri shrouded in mystery before this game. They didn't practice. They didn't warm up in the stadium. They come over late. They got that adrenaline going. They're up 10 to nothing. Now they have to come out and play good football, play sound football. Don't get so excited that you run yourself out of plays. And there's Baker, one of the backup tight ends, the starting tight end, but in this H-back role where they're trying to move him around a lot. They had eight catches last week. He has to make a reception. Smoker has almost picked off. That was golden goalpost for the Missouri Tigers' Justin Smith. But you can see the nervousness in Jeff Smoker. Freshman quarterback, true freshman. This play is not there. You throw this play over their head. Justin Smith elevates. There's not even a receiver out there to catch the football. And this is just a poorly thrown pass, a little too low. Could have been seven points mm. going the opposite direction. So you're saying you wouldn't be scared if 6'5", 270 pounds Smith was coming at you? Uh, I'm, I'm about 100 yards away from him, <laughs> so I'm not afraid of him at all. Second down and 10, three wide receivers to the left. Straight ahead running. Picking up five on the play. Little John Flowers, the junior out of Kalamazoo, Michigan. And if you're going to go against the speed guy, you bait him, you let him go directly upfield, you push him out of the way, and then you run underneath him. If you're fast and you start going in one direction, it really is hard to redirect yourself. And that time, Ulysses Booker, number 65, does a nice job in understanding what the strength of the guy that he's going against. And we see Smoker's numbers from last week. But last week, he came in as a backup. This week, he's had all week long to think about, I'm the man, and how am I going to make it happen? Herb Haygood in the slot. Missouri's coming with everybody. Smoker lets it go. Pass is incomplete. Intended for Richardson. The pass was there, though. I mean, the man was open. He just didn't get it to him. Well, not only was he open, Julian Jones, number 40, number four, fell down at the line of scrimmage. All you have to do is make that ball a catchable ball, and you have seven points going in your direction. Well, Michigan State uh, is stymied by Mo Ankney's defense of Missouri. They've punted twice. They're averaging 53 yards. Jarrett has done his part. And he is standing on his own 25-yard line. Gets it away again. Spencer just going to let it bounce. Great kick. Finally goes out of bounds. The official is going to mark it at about the seven-yard line. Are you concerned that Missouri continues to let these punts just go and not field them, James? Well, you know what? Spencer was the starting wide receiver last week. Now he's in a backup role. I think maybe his hands aren't that good. He, can, he has a lot of electricity when he catches the football, but maybe he's worried about catching it in their territory. We've got a great game coming your way next here on Fox Sports Net. The Texas Longhorns with a two-headed quarterback. They will head to Stanford as the Cardinal try to avenge that thumping at the hands of the Longhorns. What did you call that? Year. The thumping for James Lofton, Stanford oh, Cardinal. Now, see, i got to put up with Kellen saying, Missouri, you with Stanford, I'm giving you a hook'em horn sign right now, James. Could be our day. First and ten, Farmer in a hole. Passes incomplete. Well, Major Applewhite and Chris Simza, we hope you saw the feature earlier on the College Football Saturday pregame show that Kellen spent some time with these men. But look at the numbers on Applewhite last week. James, you, Eric, and I, we were watching that game, and the three of us were blown away what he did. Yeah, it's kind of a no-brainer. Major Applewhite has been very successful in every ball game that they played him in. You have a kid who's coming in, you have Applewhite injured, so Mac Brown is trying to make both kids happy. Can't have it done that way. We'll see him next week against Houston. Abram straight ahead, up to the 10-yard line. Is Missouri getting conservative on us? No. <laughs> you have the ball on your 7-yard line, you run it up the middle. They tried that pass on first down, and a pass that traveled a long distance all the way from the right hash all the way out to the numbers, and you have your best player out there, number 15, Ronaldo Hill. That ball could have easily been picked off if Hill's looking in the backfield. Uh, Michigan State having to shuttle players in and out again, James. They've got too many men on the field. They better hurry. Well, there's Richard Newsom, number 32, sneaking up around the line of scrimmage. Third and seven from the shotgun farmer. Two wide receivers to the left. He's looking short. 
forced out of the pocket. Pass is complete up to the 15-yard line. John Dowsman again. Stretches forward. It will be close, depending on where the mark. That's real close to our first and 10 line. It almost has the yellow paint on the ball. They're going to bring the chains all the way from the other side. Dowsman gets hit in the back right at the end of this play and almost pushed forward by one of the Spartan defenders. This offense of Bill Cubitt, I think it would be safe to say, is still crawling. They haven't learned to walk or run yet. But what we've seen tonight has got great potential. Well, I think what they want to do, they want to spread the field. You can't just load up and bang on people, especially when you have young people. First down for the Tigers. The grass is long on the field. Eric Clemens, how long is it? Well, it is very long, Ron Thulin, uh, about an inch and five eighths to be exact. Brad Friesenberg, the turf specialist here at Missouri for the athletic department, says it's being kept this way to protect it from the 100 degree plus temperatures we've had around here the last couple of weeks. But as we get closer to fall like weather in 70s and 50s at night, they're going to cut it a little bit lower. But it might have slowed down Michigan State up to right now. Maybe, maybe so, guys. Well, the Michigan State coaches said it wasn't going to affect them. Abram bounces up to 24, up to the 25-yard line. Is it more of a psychological factor, Eric, more than a physical factor for these teams? Well, I, I think for the visitors, it might be more of a psychological factor. Some of the assistant coaches in Michigan State before the game said, wow, this stuff is really long, kind of almost like a practice field, some of them were talking about. And as James Lofton pointed out earlier, guys, he said, when you cut on the longer grass, it puts pretty big chunks out there in the field that could affect you later in the game. You can see at home, as you look at the video, some of the chunks out there on the field with guys cutting with the inch and five-inch grass. We'll see what kind of effect it has later. Well, somebody got a divot right there. It looked like one of our wedge shots. Yeah, the, the longer it is, the more you dig down into it to try and get your balance and your footing in. It will come up. I remember the old days when Oklahoma would come here with their speed teams <laughs> under Barry Switzer, and Coach Switzer used to joke that Al Adafrio, Warren Powers, or whoever would be out here just watering this field, trying to make it a marsh to slow people down. Somewhere there's a starving cow that would love to get <laughs> loose on this field. Al, it's third down and one now for the Tigers. Lewis and Abram, I formation. Farmer doing a nice job getting them in the plays they need. Michigan State is offside. Abram is going to be stacked up, but I think the Spartans may have jumped a little too quickly. And, and that is great poise by Kurt Farmer. Talk about two young quarterbacks out here playing today. See, Farmer really is poised. He's playing at home. He's, you know, slept in his own dorm room last night. Now he's got, he's very settled. You know, this is not Death Valley. This is not Clemson last week. Offside, on the defense, five yards, first down. Kirk Farmer operating behind a different center this year. A.J. Ricker, the redshirt freshman out of Spring, Texas, Klein High School, he took over for Rob Reedy. He did a nice job when he saw the guys jump offside. Bam, snapped the ball. Now three wide receivers lined up to the left side. Zane Gilmore now the tailback. They swing it out to Gilmore, looking for one block. 30 up to about the 34-yard line, and he is going to be ushered out of bounds by a bunch of white jerseys, led by Cedric Henry. And the, the tough thing for the Spartans now, they don't know what to expect. You know, they watch film, they watch Clemson run up and down on these guys, they watch six turnovers, and, and they knew that something was going to change. They didn't know exactly what to practice for. So now they, they see a different formation almost every play. Great job by Bill Cuban spreading it around, but not making it too gimmicky. A couple of gimmicks have worked, but this is good sound football by the Tigers. Now they're averaging almost eight yards of play thanks to a 71-yard pass. Farmer's pass complete up to the 50-yard line. What a catch by Travis Garvin. His first catch of the evening, his third of the year. As a quarterback, you have to see it and believe it. And you have to see it before the play happens. Farmer has great protection. The offensive line does a magnificent job. You see them form that pocket in the cup. The ball is just a little late. It's there right now. Throw that ball early because you see the defensive back closing in. Four wide receivers for the Tigers. First and ten right at midfield, leading 10-0 here in the first. Play action. Farmer didn't take anybody out, but the pass is complete up to the 45-yard line. Eric Spencer with the reception, but he paid the price. Cedric Henry lowered the boom on him. And we got a flag down on the other side coming from the, the line judge. 
Could be an illegal downfield. There it is. Perot Field in Columbia, Missouri. Under a beautiful blue sky, the sun is beginning to set. Temperature in the 70s, perfect night for football. Along with James Lofton and Eric Clemens, I'm Ron Thulin, and we have got a dandy going on. As Michigan State, number 22 in the country, trailing the unranked Missouri Tigers, coming in at 1-1 one and one on the year. As Missouri is pulling out all the stops, in case you just joined us, they didn't even have pregame warm-ups here at Faroe Field. They went across the street to their practice field and was bussed over just about five minutes before kickoff. When a call was illegal downfield at the five-yard penalty, it's not a loss of down, so it's first and 15 for the Tigers. That is impressive. 166 to 9 total yardage. Tigers keep it on the ground. Abram, he is banging his way to 50. Abram, are you surprised at Kirk Farmer? We know athletically he is exceptional, but how he has the poise tonight and he is actually providing the leadership this offense needs. Well, I think so many things went poorly for them last week against Clemson. Poor throws, fumbles, penalties, laying it on the carpet, misuse in the kicking game. But this is a ball club that Larry Smith really got them to work hard in practice. Practice to get better, he said. They actually graded the practice film this past week and put it up on the right. board for everyone to see. Practice, not just a practice. Farmer on second down, lofts it up. Pass is complete. Penalty. Oh, not a penalty. Nope. Flag, they're just marking it. Those are markers saying he went out of bounds. Yeah. He came back in. Did he establish himself back in and catch the ball? In college football, you can go out of bounds, come back in and make the catch. Great catch by Dousman, number 80 on the sideline. He made that catch. He made possession of the ball. He got back inbounds and made the catch. And it's also nice that it happens right on the Tiger sideline. There you see the bump and run coverage, and it's physical. He's getting knocked around. You see him go out of bounds, come back in, and come down with the football. And I think he may have been a little shaken up on that play. That'll knock the air right out of you. But Dowsman having a wonderful game already with three catches for 96 yards. He's going to catch his breath. We hope to update his condition as it becomes available to us. On first and ten, Farmer almost knocked off. Ronaldo Hill, the senior out of Detroit, Michigan, stepped right in front of that and he had 70 yards of green Missouri grass in front of him. And Farmer's telling Ronaldo Hill that he has to come back for the ball. He can start off by Garvin rather. Needs to drive up further up the field then come back because he's probably at the right depth for a quick rollout because he's running a short route. You have a deeper corner behind him but he needs to work up then come back for the football. Second down and ten. Ball at the 33-yard line. They keep it on the ground. Abram getting the workhorse load today, and that might be the final play of the opening quarter. He gets down to the 30-yard line. Pick up a three on the play. Larry Smith knows that this is a very important game for his team, not only for the season, but for the Big 12 Conference. And after one quarter of play, his team's doing exactly what he had hoped for. They lead Michigan State 10-0. Michigan State head coach Bobby Williams, his team trails 10-0. He was a star running back at Sumner High School in St. Louis. And last time he played here in Columbia, 1976 state championship game. And I'm sure that his team had more than nine yards after the first <laughs> quarter. And 11 plays and nine yards. So there have been a lot of negative plays for Michigan State. And a great job by Missouri in really penetrating the back. We saw Justin Smith doing it. But other guys are crossing that line of scrimmage. And that's where they're beating them. They're beating them in the pit. You know, we can talk all we want about the receivers, quarterbacks, defensive backs. It's getting done up front on both sides by Missouri. Missouri confusing Michigan State defensively, and they're going to have to burn a timeout. Ronaldo Hill saw that they had too many guys running all over the field, and he was trying to signal the timeout. And I mentioned earlier what they're doing is they're starting their defensive set with 14 and then trying to get guys off the field. Let's take a Dr. Pe Pepper game break. Let's send it to our college football Saturday studio with Kevin Frazier. Ron, last year, Cincinnati upset Wisconsin. Today, the fourth-ranked Badgers trailing Cincy in overtime. Eddie Faulkner replacing Michael Benning, who was suspended because of Shoegate, scores the game winner. Wisconsin escapes. And meanwhile in here, we've got to calm Kellen down. He is going crazy about his Tigers. 
<laughs> you know what? I got one question, though, James. Let's say it's Stanford, right? If you were some big guy, you got your name on the wall, you're very famous, wouldn't you donate some money for, like, the Kellen Winslow Suite here in this new, beautiful $13 million press box? I didn't see the Winslow Suite. Did you? I think it's coming, and I think Kellen, being the generous <laughs> benefactor that he is, is probably just saving up, and there it is. Kellen Winslow, number 83. We all know him as a San Diego Charger Hall of Famer, but they look at this guy, an All-American, and, and you walk into their football offices, and there he is, bigger than life. But you know what? There was one time when he was actually kind of slim, when he Kellen was. had a waistline. <laughs> we will continue our picking on Kellen Winslow throughout the evening. Third down and six. Farmer pressured, and he is going to be dropped at the 40-yard line. That is the sixth sack allowed by Missouri this year, and only the third for Michigan State. When you decide to spread the field as an offensive unit, the quarterback has to have vision. He must see these two guys right there, right there and right there. They're coming. They're creeping up on him. You could even see on the telestrator they were magically creeping up on him. The quarterback has to be aware of those guys coming off the edge. So what they've done now is they've taken them out of field goal range. Now, Sean Foster now set to return the punt. Gilpin, no rush, just wants to hang it, but he moved it a little bit too far. That'll find the Missouri writing in the end zone. And we have a timeout with 14-14 left to play in quarter number two. Missouri leads by a touchdown and a field goal. Saturday on Fox Sports Net continues with Missouri taking on Michigan State. Memorial Union here on the campus of the University of Missouri, along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton. I'm Ron Thulin. 10 0 is our score. First and 10 for the Michigan State Spartans have sputtered offensively. But Duckett's got some running room, and he is tripped up. Nice open field tackle by Antoine Duncan. But you know what? He was quiet up until that run. He had rushed two times for minus four yards. Why isn't he getting the space that he got last week, James? Because they have done a good job in, in penetrating in the backfield. You look at his size, 252 pounds. We talked about his speed. But what you're doing, you're trying to play a game of cat and mouse. You get in the backfield. Sometimes you'll run yourself out of plays, stunning and twisting, and that's what happened to the Tigers on that last play. He'll try to duck it the right side. Sees a little bit of the gap. He gets it, stays on his feet as he stumbles forward up to about the 48-yard line. That was the ducket we saw in the second half versus Marshall last week. That pickup was 18. Yeah, and Mo Achini, the defensive coordinator, said, you know, we won't have any defensive backs at the end of the game if they have to tackle them very often. You have to make your front seven get involved. And a guy this big, you don't want him to get up that head of speed, that head of steam, and get into your backfield as often as he has, especially the last two carries. Just been wide open that time. He almost went the distance again. High school quarterback was recruited as a linebacker and a running back. He's still learning the position. Should have been illegal for him to play quarterback in oh, high yeah. school. Smoker going deep and the pass is overthrown intended for Herb Haygood. Well, there was some talk about Missouri moving Justin Smith to a linebacker spot. They sort of squelched that little talk, but he's not afraid to drop back a little bit. Yeah, but that's the zone blitz right there. You see him dropping back, moving back into coverage because they have someone else blitzing from his area. So he engages the offensive lineman so that lineman can't spin out and pick up the blitzer. Nice job by Justin Smith, but they always look so funny. They look like the bear at the ballet. Two tight ends, Chris Baker in the slot. They go to Haygood, passes drop. Now, Smoker cannot buy a break right now, but we still are, have yet to talk about Chris Baker, who had the first five receptions of the game last week versus Marshall. He had a big 30-plus touchdown reception, eight catches on the day, but they have really kept tabs with this young man. Well, defensively, what they wanted to do, number one, they wanted to stop Duckett. Number two was to control Baker to find out where he is. And really, they really believe that they have a chance in this ball game if Jeff Smoker has to beat them. They want to be a better third down team. They have a third and ten now. Missouri comes with a blip pass is incomplete, almost picked off. Intended for Herb Haygood. Gary Anthony was there for Missouri, thought he had a chance at an interception, and the Tigers defense holds again. 
And one of the weaknesses of this ball game, you remember Plexico Burris, the number one draft pick for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Well, he's not here anymore. They have new receivers playing this year. Guys have been moved from tailback to wide receiver, and they really haven't grasped that wide receiving position very well. Jarrett has done a nice job kicking the football. Spencer standing on his 10. A high spiraling kick. Spencer is not going to feel it. Gets a Missouri bounce. Still bouncing. That was about a plus eight gain on the punt after it hit. And Missouri will take over the football. The fans love it in Columbia. They should. They lead. And we'll be back. We welcome you back to Columbia, Missouri. The Tigers have the football. They have a 10-0 lead. First and 10 from their own 22-yard line. Check that 27-yard line. They have controlled everything so far in this football game. They have 183 yards total offense to just 38 for Michigan State. But still, plenty of time left in this football game. Michigan State was showing blitz. They kept it on the ground, running the right side. And one thing I think that Missouri has done effectively in this football game is tempo. Well, tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, join Terry, Howie, JB, and Chris as they take you around the NFL with the most entertaining hour of pregame football on TV. Julian Barbieri, the newest addition to the pregame gang, tells you where it's hot and where it's not. And football guru Jimmy Kimmel is back with the winning picks. Sunday pregame show tomorrow, noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, only on Fox. Do you think they've controlled the tempo right now, something Cubit wanted to do? I think not only have they controlled the tempo, but they have confused Michigan State. Their substitution pattern has gotten the best of them. We talked about Michigan State starting a series with 14 people on the field. Look at the advantage in offensive snaps that they've run. And that's ball control, time of possession. You want that in your favor. You also want to be able to score points. They're getting another tailback in right now, getting Zane Gilmore in. Had an equipment problem, it looked like, with Zach Abram. Third down at about five, three wide receivers to the right. They swing it out to Gilmore. He has the first down. Good hard running by the junior out of Tampa, Florida, coming off a very solid sophomore season, the former high school player of the year in Florida. And both Zane Gilmore and Zach Abrams, Zane Gilmore number two here, they are not flashy running backs. They're going to lower their shoulders and run into you. 6'1", 222 pounds, both these guys could double for bowling balls or fullbacks. <laughs> and they're very physical players. They don't want to make you miss. Yeah. They want to make you hurt. Well, they want to run this spread offense about 50% of the time under the motto of don't flinch. And I think they've done that thus far. Farmer has done a lot of play checking. At Western Michigan, Cuba telling us yesterday his quarterback would check off some 260 plus times a year from the line of scrimmage. First and 10 from their own 40-yard line. Straight up the middle handoff. Again, Gilmore finding about three yards on the play. That offensive line doing a nice job with Mike Hayes, A.J. Ricker, and Adrian Cole, the center and the guards. This Missouri offense much maligned at the end of last year. Only scored 14 points the final three games they were held scoreless versus the teams from kansas kansas and kansas state thus the revamping of the offense this year farmer keeps complete up to about the 48 yard line eric spencer the junior out of houston texas former high school quarterback with a reception short of the first down set up about third and three we'll call it Bobby Williams, I think that reaction says it all. He's a very low-key gentleman. No question about him getting this head coaching position when Nick Saban left. In fact, he was actually interviewing for another job as we have an injury on the play. When he found out that uh, he was getting the job, Richard Newsom is going to limp off. Third and three. And I think the most impressive thing about Bobby Williams getting this job, and he is an impressive man, is the fact that no assistants left to go to LSU with Coach Saban. And I think that says something about the quality of person Bobby Williams is. Does it say anything about Coach Saban? <laughs> I don't make generalities. Well, you, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's public knowledge that there are some coaches who are 
harder to work for him. One of the headline articles in the paper, we'll get to it after this. Travis Garvin with a big reception, and he is in the Michigan State territory. They call Garvin the big play guy with sprinter speed. We saw a little bit of both right there. But just to finish up on Bobby Williams, the players say that practice is more fun now. That doesn't mean that you wor aren't working as hard, but you're working a little smarter, maybe not as long, and the players are getting more out of it. Right now, maybe they yeah. wish that they had Saban back and they were getting <laughs> something out of this ball game. Just about five minutes gone by here in quarter number two. Missouri has kept the Michigan State defense on their heels the entire game. Farmer, three-step drop, a look-in pass, almost picked off. Ronaldo Hill had it, and that is about the third pass that Michigan State has had the opportunity to intercept. Yeah, but what Farmer sees, he sees one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. He wants to throw a slant pattern. You run a slant pattern, you better keep coming. His wide receiver puts the brakes on. That guy stops. That guy stops, you take him out of the game, you put him on the, on the sideline, you sit him on the bench. That is a play where you have to go in there and make that. You sacrifice your body to go in and make that catch. Numbers on Farmer, second and 10, three wide receivers stacked to the near side. Here comes Michigan State, Farmer reads it, pass to Garvin, leans forward, up to about the 43-yard line. You know, one of the things about playing on the defensive line is getting a comfort level. Here we are, hiking up and down, moving those legs around. Almost looks like he might have a cramp yeah. in that right leg, trying to shake it out. Or he could be giving a signal to a player behind him, saying, this guy's set in such and such a way. You know, when you're shaking the rump that much, you got to be <laughs> telling somebody something. I'm not touching that one. <laughs> Four wide receivers for the Tigers, facing third and nine. High snap, here comes the pressure. Farmer hit as he releases, pass is incomplete. Bradshaw Little John is the one who put the pressure on, the true freshman out of Gaffney, South Carolina. Farmer does a great job in handling the high snap and in, in making a, 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 a good play out of something that could have been a disastrous play. And he did the smart thing, just getting rid of the football as quickly as possible. This doesn't look like the same offense that turned the ball over six times last week. Jared Gilpin again. Back to punt. The junior out of Jefferson City, Missouri. Need this inside the 15, Jared. And he got a little bit too much of the size 10s in on it. That'll go into the end zone. And Michigan State will take over first and 10 their own 20. Next week starts your college football Saturday with the pregame show presented by Rivals.com at 11.30 a.m. Eastern, 8.30 a.m. Pacific. Then at 3.30 Eastern, it's triple header action starting with number 14 UCLA visiting Pac-10 rival Oregon, followed by Houston and number 5 Texas, then Cal and Fresno State right here on Fox Sports Net. And UCLA, the big upset special today, beating Michigan. We talked to Bob Toledo, the UCLA coach. He wouldn't call it an upset. And, of course, the matchup, Texas and Stanford following our game. Mix up in the backfield. Missouri all over Dewan Moss. That's not a mix-up. That's number 77, Pat Minnit. Minguchi. <laughs> nice Italian boy. Eric Clemens, how about the Newsom for Michigan State on the defense? What's his status? All right, Ron, Richard Newsom, the safety, had his right knee looked at. It was wrapped and iced. He bruised it on the very first play and aggravated it a little later on. He's going to be iced. His return is questionable, guys. That will be a huge loss for that Michigan State defense. That senior, he is a preseason second team, all Big Ten, and one of the leaders. Richardson and Haygood, the, re the wide receivers, they go up top. Pass is complete. Chris Baker, the tight end, or check that. Yeah, Chris Baker, the tight end, with his first reception of the evening. And Chris Baker, when we talked to the coaches about this guy, you know, he was a high school wide receiver, so he has that agility, he has that body size. Nice 16 yard game, but look at the adjustment on making the catch. And you know, he actually gets both feet inbounds. He's only a junior, but maybe he's thinking about the NFL as his next step. Now, we know he's tough. He lived his first 13 years in Queens, New York.
You see the numbers on him last week versus Marshall. How could a place named Queens be a tough place? Ah, I tell you what, a few guys come from there. Smoker hit as he releases. Pass is complete. Smoker took a shot in the back by Justin Smith but he's able to complete the pass to Richardson. That young freshman showed some poise on that. But you're getting great pressure by Justin Smith. He's working against Euless Booker. And you see Booker almost hooked him again. He had that arm around the body, and nice seven on seven down there. Antonio Duncan making the hit on LaBelle Richardson. Now Duncan giving up four or five inches on Richardson. Let's see if Michigan State will take advantage of that. First and 10. Trying to get into Missouri territory. Four wide receivers. Three-step drop. Pass tip. Almost picked off. Intended for Richardson. They forced that one into a crowd. You have zone coverage. Nice drop by the defender. Number 55, Jamonte Robinson getting back in the passing lane. As a quarterback, you've got to be aware of where guys are going to end up, not just where they line up. Ryan Van Dyke, the junior who started against Marshall, bruised that throwing thumb, is out. T.J. Duckett has not played in a while. We have not seen him or called his number. Missouri brings five. Smoker steps up in the pocket, and he is going to take a seat. Cedric Harden wrapped him up, the sophomore out of Humble, Texas, who did not play very well versus Clemson. He is stepping up the game this evening. And there weren't a lot of guys who played well, and you don't want to claim that you played well when you lose 62-9, to nine, and I think that really has motivated this team. They came back. They worked hard. Larry Smith said when we got off the plane, we had a one-hour meeting. We kind of aired it out. The captains got up. Players got up. We all talked. We got it off our chest. We watched the film so that we could get better. We just didn't destroy it. It is loud. Third and ten. Smoker's pass complete. Let's see if the officials call it. No, they're saying it is incomplete. We saw dirt being kicked up intended for Sean Foster, the former running back, and we have a penalty flag thrown. Now, they pointed holding in the direction of Missouri. I they think got, he made they a got, mistake. They got that wrong. Yeah, that's just definitely holding against Michigan State. And that's all about effort. You're not always going to get to the passer. You put enough effort, you get past that defender, and he has to grab onto you to save his quarterback. Personal foul, hands to the face on the offense. Penalty is declined. Fourth down. Okay, hands to the face, those hands mm. ride up as you're, and that guy is slipping past you. You're fighting, scratching, trying to keep him off your quarterback. And you see a very perturbed Bobby Williams. This is a new situation for him. He coached in the Citrus Bowl. They won that. They have a home opening win against Marshall. Now it's kind of getting to the point where things are getting a little sticky. Jarrett averaging about 46 yards a kick. Julian Jones, the only Missouri Tiger back at his own 10. Low snap. Good job, Jarrett, again. Line drive kick. Jones fair catches it at the 16-yard line, a 44-yard kick. When we return, we'll send you back to Kevin Frazier at our College Football Saturday studio with a preview of our Nissan Halftime Report. Uh, Kel is just losing his mind. He's running around the studio. He's cheering for his Missouri Tigers. I got to go calm him down. Welcome back to Columbia, Missouri. Missouri Tigers average about 260 yards a game so far early on in this season. They have 220 yards already total offense with just over seven minutes left in our opening half. They have put on a show. A little reverse to Garvin. Picks up two, three, maybe four yards before Cedric Henry comes up from that left cornerback spot to make the hit. You know, we talk about the left cornerback spot, and you made a comment to all of us last night in our production meeting. You feel that traditionally the left cornerback is your best cornerback on the team. Is that the apropos for Cedric Henry? Well, I, I believe it is, and he's playing the open side when you have a right-handed quarterback. He drops back, and he's looking directly at his receiver. If you're going to turn and throw to the left side, then you have to refocus your body, and that guy has an extra beat to make that play if he's the right corner. Now they're going to call it a pickup of two on the play. Second and eight from the shotgun. Farmer looks left, throws right, has a man. Incomplete. No penalty flag intended for John Dosman. 
Not a big window there. He's trying to fit that ball in between Henry, number 37, and there's Duckett on the sideline. I haven't seen those knee braces before down on his knees. That's new apparel that he has on, so he maybe he tweaked something a little bit. You can see him stretching, trying to get loosened up. All the linemen for Michigan State wear the little knee braces, but for Duckett, that's, that's a new piece of equipment. There you can see he has it on both knees, so sometimes you might want to put that on. We talked about the long grass, and it does feel different than running on the yeah. turf, and it's even different playing on a game in it than even if you practice on it every day. Missouri 5 for 9 on third down conversions. This is third and 8. Farmer running the option. It's dangerous. The pitch back to Zach Abram. Not much running room. He will probably get back to the line of scrimmage. Maybe pick up, oh, about a foot or so. So the Tigers are going to be forced to kick it away. And this is where it is dangerous. Last year, they were plagued by bad snaps, bad coverage, bad kicking. And it was something that just gnawed away at Larry Smith. His son, Corby Smith, now in charge of special teams. And they are still concerned about it. He opened from his own five-yard line. Good solid snap. Sean Foster is backing up to the 26. And he is going to be dropped at about the 35-yard line. Larry Smith has had a great career, and there are a couple of things he is extremely proud of in his life. Well, I think I'm most proud of that I've, any place I've been able to go, I've been able to, to get him, help him get turned around. And, and that uh, I've been a head coach at uh, this uh, is my fourth school, and every one of them uh, we have taken losing teams and turned them into winning teams or championship teams and bowl teams. And um, I'm proud of that. And he should be. T.J. Duckett is back in the lineup for Michigan State at the tailback spot, and he has the football. And he's not going anywhere. Larry Smith has seen everything. Of course, he had fourth year at both Tulane and Arizona that he was talking about. He put him in the win column, also coached at SC. His coaching career spans all the way back to 1962. And he joins uh, Lou Holtz as uh, one of the coaches to, to take a couple of teams to bowls, and he is, he is truly a good football coach, James. And you don't forget how to coach just after a four and seven season. But talking about turning things around, he's had to turn around just from the end of last season to now. Smoker's pass is complete to Baker. So he has his second reception in Tiger territory to the 45, pickup of 20 on the play. And Baker is obviously their, their most polished receiver, even though he's not a wide receiver at the tight end position. They're letting this guy run a little too unobstructed off the line of scrimmage. You have to get in his face, bump him a little bit. You see the size. Last year, he was all Big Ten selection. A really impressive player. He's caught seven touchdown passes for his career before this season. He had a touchdown last week where he just shook a guy off. The guy looked like an ant trying to tackle him. Well, I tell you, he's got the best hands on the team as Duckett goes in motion. They give it to the fullback. Moss going nowhere quickly, and he is going to be dropped for a five-yard loss. Cedric Harden again coming from that right side to put the pressure on. He is having a whale of a football game. Pat Duffy also in on it along with Justin Smith. We talk about Justin Smith, that quickness, that ability to get off the football, and he's relentless. He's trying, he's working, he's getting blocked pretty good there. <laughs> Look at the shove at the end <laughs> on McCorry. You know, the, and the Michigan State coach is telling us last night that in that blowout loss to Clemson last week, Justin Smith's engine never turned off even when they were down by a bundle. Well, that's a pride factor. Second down, Missouri bringing a bunch of people. Pass is complete. Shaking one tackle is McCoy. Running room. Cuts inside to the 10. Down to about the 8-yard line. Missed tackles cost that for Missouri. Pick up of 40 on the play. Well, as good as Chris Baker, number 83, is, and we just got through talking about him, Ivory McCoy is not as big, but he's fast. He also plays some at defensive end. You can see the speed. He's a two-way player. He got dehydrated last week against Clemson, took an IV, came back in the ball game. Doesn't have the great hands, but you can see what he can do after the catch. And Michigan State knocking on the door. First and goal. Right at the 10-yard line. Two tight ends. Duckett 
Right side, barreling his way. Gang tackled down to the eight-yard line. Pat Duffy leading the charge, the junior out of Hemet, California. This is the way you play defense, though. Well, it's got to be picked. You've got to get it done in the middle. You see Mangucci, number 77, getting his shoulder in the play direction, and he gets it started because he allows the pursuit to come, and here you just have to line up nine guys in the box, yeah. say, if you're going to beat us, you're going to beat us one-on-one -on, -one on the outside, but we're not going to let Duckett have a free run into the end zone. Hey, good wide to the left, the pitch to Duckett, right side. At the five-yard line, he is going to be upended. Antoine Duncan throws his 5'10", 175-pound body at T.J. Duckett at 252 pounds. Duckett, 275 at the Citrus Bowl, thanks to a wonderful television diet of hamburgers and pizza. <laughs> I didn't see the problem with that myself. No, that's the diet that we're on also. And you see this is their most successful drive so far, the six plays, 60 yards. Saw the big play, the pass to the tight end, Ivory McCoy. Now you have to get it done in a limited area. You're on the five-yard line. You have 15 yards of depth to pass the football. And when you're on the right half like they are, the place where you want to throw the football is probably over to the left side. You have more room to work with, but it also becomes dangerous because if you're a smart defensive back, you know that they can't really throw the ball behind me. They have to get it in front of me, and I can take my chance become a hero, getting a record book with maybe a 105-yard interception return. We talked about Michigan State being a better third down team, 0 for 5 tonight. Third and goal. Smoker into the flat, overthrows a wide open Chris Baker. My goodness, you're going to look at that and kick yourself. Sometimes you're good, sometimes you're lucky. This time, the Missouri defense is just flat out lucky. You get a little pressure, Smoker has to throw the ball high. Larry Smith and Ricky Hundley in the background. Ricky Hundley, an old linebacker, he's signaling touchdowns. He hit too many people. He's signaling <laughs> touchdown, but it's not a touchdown. David Schaefer to attempt the field goal. He's two for two. Coming into this game. And he drills that one. Make it three for three on the season. Schaefer's field goal gets Michigan State on the board. The Larry Smith troops lead by seven. Michigan State on the board. Schaefer, deep kick into the end zone. And the Big Ten co-special teams player of the week, who had ten points last week versus Marshall, gets the touchback. Ricardo Rhodes isn't going anywhere. Well, that was the best look at the Michigan State scoring uh, opportunity that we've seen this evening. Bobby Williams has to like it. A nice sustained eight-play, 60-yard drive. Topped off, of course, the big play, the pass to Ivory McCoy, who took it 40 yards. Schaefer ending up with that 22-yard field goal. How important is this 242 for the Missouri Tigers now, James? They've dominated the entire game thus far. Don't they have to continue this, not to play, not to lose at this point? Well, the objective of every offensive team is to attack, to put points on the scoreboard. Get too conservative here, you turn the ball right back over to Michigan State. Two wide receivers to the right. They're going to keep it on the ground with Avery. Boy, he is a good, solid, tough runner. He inches his way up to the 25 to the 26-yard line. He's 234 <laughs> pounds. He is a big back. And he's tough getting up off the ground, too. You saw a little shove there at the tail end of the play. And, and you know what? It's about attitude. These guys got kicked around last week in Death Valley against Clemson. They're not going to have it done at home. No huddle offense. Farmer on second and four. Swings it out of the flat. Pass is complete. Garvin has some running room, and he is forced out of bounds by Thomas Wright. I don't think they're getting conservative. We talked about the left corner being able to look in the backfield, see the quarterback. That guy can see the quarterback, see the ball come out, and he almost thought he had it. The receiver does a nice job coming back to the inside. They end up with a 28-yard gain. And the important thing, now they move into Michigan State territory. Garvin's second reception this evening, first and 10, closing in on two minutes left in the half. Missouri trying to add to their lead. Michigan State bringing five. Farmer sees it, passes incomplete. 
Our sideline man who knows everything is Eric Clemens, Eric. I tell you what, the Michigan State bench, very interested. You got the feeling they only needed a play to get back in this thing. Of course, Coach Williams, very disappointed when they missed that pass. He simply kissed, kicked the dirt, but his team right back in it now at 10-3. Now they need a defensive stand, guys. Did you see the mascot closing in on Eric? I think they did. I think he likes Eric. Oh, man. <laughs> Well, he had his arms folded a little bit earlier because he was just disgusted at his team not being able to put anything on the board, but they got the three last time. Well, Michigan State had eight men on the line of scrimmage. There was a lot of dancing going on. We're going to have to sort this thing out. Look, we had a little move by Justin uh, Joe Glaberman. Offense, five yards, still second down. Well, that'll bring up a second down at 15, push it back into their own territory by about a half a yard. And Bobby Williams knew that last week was a tough game. Marshall is a very good football team, but he warned his team after the spanking that Missouri took last week, these guys will be coming out looking for blood. He said, we've talked about it the whole week. The odder the formation, the harder it is to come with an all-out blitz. You don't see them crowding the line of scrimmage this time. They have a deep guy in center field. Farmer, dangerous pass, almost picked off. It is complete to Eric Spencer. Kirk Farmer is living a charmed life tonight at times. He's thrown a lot of balls out there that have been real close. You know, you've got to get some movement downfield. These guys have to get off the football. They're getting stopped at the line of scrimmage. See them kind of blocking their feet because they want to block. That ball is late coming out. And there's a the defensive back back in the backfield almost making that play. No huddle again. Third down and 15 for the Tigers. Michigan State again showing blitz. They only bring four. Farmer's pass is complete, and he won't make it to the original line of scrimmage. Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end that's been compared to our Kellen Winslow at times with his first reception. No, no one compares to Kellen Winslow. Well, to Blakely's credit, we told him that last year, and he said, there's no way. He said, I cannot even imagine being compared to Kellen Winslow. And, and you know it's tough when you compare someone to someone that great who has a body of work behind him. And I talked about Kellen's body earlier, so I'm trying to make a... <laughs> Gilpin back to punt again, standing at his own 39-yard line. Foster back at his own 10. Gilpin has done a nice job tonight. State moving around a lot. No rush. Gilpin booms it again. Takes a nice bounce, and they're going to mark it inside the 10, down to about the 5-yard line. Well, in 28 seconds plus a commercial, we will have our Nissan halftime report. We'll send it out to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. They'll update you on everything, including the top 10 madness. How about Michigan, UCLA, Kansas State also playing tonight. That'll be coming up on our Nissan halftime report in 28 plus a commercial. Now, we had somebody lose in the top five today, didn't we? Michigan? Michigan. I think that Kansas State may move up. I mean, the yep. Big 12 really is strong this year. Mm -hmm. We saw uh, Texas A&M play last week. Texas is on a roll. This Missouri team looks pretty good also. Michigan State's going to be content to go ahead and run out the clock. And I think it's a golden opportunity, as you mentioned, James, for the Big 12 to make a move in the rankings right now. A&M looked impressive last week, but Bobby Williams is not concerned about any ranking right now. He's probably more concerned with the fact his offense only generated 124 yards. Missouri has already reached their season average of 259. And that's one of the reasons at halftime the Missouri Tigers will head to the locker room with a 10-3 lead over the number 22 Spartans. We were expecting the unexpected for the Tigers, and that is exactly what we got. And Eric Clemens is with Bobby Williams now. Eric? Coach, they threw everything at you in the first half. Still, you had some opportunities. Your assessment? Well, obviously, we're not playing very well right now, but just to be down by seven, hey, we're still in the game. We get the ball to get in the second half, so we just got to come out with a little fire in us. All right, good enough, Coach. Good luck to you in the second half. Bobby Williams, his team trailing 10-3 at the half. Now time for our Nissan Halftime Report. Missouri surprising Michigan State 10-3. Time for Kellen, Kevin, and Artie to fill you in on the rest of the action, guys. With Kevin Frazier, Kellen Winslow, and Artie Gigantino. 
Bit of a surprise in Columbia, Missouri at the half as Missouri leads Michigan State 10 to 3. Kelly's Tigers out in front. Meanwhile, across the rest of the 25 teams in his tenure here at the University of Missouri, the last time he beat a top 20 team, that was 1997. The Oklahoma State Cowboys came in ranked number 12 in the country. Missouri won at 51-50 in overtime. Now Missouri is going to kick it off. Hits the leg, bouncing around. Michigan State will begin first and 10 from their own 35-yard line. We have a couple of players shaking up on the play from Missouri, number 24. Eric Spencer took a hit on the tackle. And Michigan State with 125 yards total offense will begin the second half with the football. And you see the numbers on Smoker. Six for 16, 105 yards. He started to find his tight ends there in the second quarter. Isn't that something you'd expect uh, them to do a little more of here in quarter number three? No, I would expect them to put the ball in the gut of T.J. Duckett. You do that first and foremost. You don't let the game go into Smoker's hands. As good as your tight ends are, mm -hmm. I think that T.J. Duckett is your bread and butter. Well, Missouri wants the ball in Smoker's hands. He wants, they want uh, Smoker to beat them. And there is Duckett. Of course, he had that huge half against Marshall last week. Duckett finishing with 219 yards. About 185 of those came in quarters three and four. He just wore Marshall down defensively. You know, as calm as every head coach looks when we meet with them before the game, the night before, in the hotel or at their practice facilities, the volume goes up at halftime. With Bobby Williams, you, you want to be calm, you want, but you go in and you make a point. We're getting beaten at the line of scrimmage. We're going to come out. We're going to run the ball down their throats. Right now, they're having some alignment problems. Two tight ends, Ivory McCoy, the tight end on the right side. Penetration by Missouri. Duckett runs right by it. Gets into Missouri territory down to the 45-yard line. Julian Jones, the senior out of Midwest City, had to come. Midwest City, Oklahoma, had to come up to make the stop. And when you talk about getting it done, you have to get it done up front. You see Ivory McCoy, he runs Justin Smith around the corner. We talked about Smith being a speed player. He used that speed to advantage. Nice 15-yard pickup, and you see the legs driving and churning, and those defensive backs are hanging on for dear life. Picked up a 15 on the play. Now Baker goes tight end left side. Duck it again. He'll try that left side. Missouri with some pursuit. Duck it runs right by it, and he picks up another 15. Boy, that is the pitter-patter feat we saw, and we've talked about that Duckett has. He sort of pitter-patters, he finds that hole, and boom, he's gone. You know, there are some running backs that you have to get everything correct with. You have to block all the guys. Here's, here's Baker trying to go down on Doyle to get the play, but he gets just enough of them, just enough push, because Duckett has such great speed. You see him using that stiff arm, and he has the ball in the correct hand. The outside on a lover back, he can carry the ball in both arms. Duckett's just bullying his way, picking up six on the play, crossing the 25, down to about the 24-yard line. You knew he was a great athlete in high school. He still holds the Class A high school state record for the shot put in Michigan. Bobby Bowden down at Florida State recruited him as a running back and linebacker. You see his numbers, first half, second half. So last week in the first half, he had 34 and ended up with 215, so it looks like he could be on his way to a repeat performance. On second and four. This time, nothing doing. Pat Duffy coming up from that linebacker spot. The junior who every year we hear that Pat Duffy is going to be replaced at linebacker for Missouri. And every year this former walk-on says, no way, I can still play. Now here's the big call. You're, you're Michigan State, third and five. Do you take the ball out of the hands of T.J. Duckett? Do you let Smoker throw the pass that potentially will get you a first down here? Well, Duckett isn't even in the game. They've taken him out. Little John Flowers has come in. Two wide receivers to the right. 0 for 6 on third down conversions. The Spartans this evening. Missouri bringing 6 and Smoker is hit. Right as he released the football, and they call it Missouri's ball. Justin Smith has wreaked havoc again. When you hustle, good things happen. You get after the quarterback, you put him under extreme pressure. It looks as if his arm is coming forward, but he gets hit. He tries to make it appear. You see the arm come forward. 
but he's actually looks almost looks like, like he's pulling the ball back in. The officials are aware of that. They make the correct call. They call fumble. Missouri Tigers football. Look at Justin Smith blow in from that left side. Larry Smith knows he has a dandy in the junior out of Holt Summit, Missouri, and Justin Smith has done yeoman's work tonight. He plays up to the competition. I don't think there's any question about that. I think he's playing a little above the competition tonight. Michigan State moving the ball, and then they have the fumble. First turnover of the ball game for him. And Missouri goes down to Zach Averin, already a career high rushing the football tonight as his first career collegiate touchdown. And the workhorse out of Wentzville, Missouri, continuing to be the battering ram of this offense. I don't think you're going to get a lot of room running directly up the middle. Josh Thornhill, Josh Shaw, Slayer, those guys are playing well. They're playing good inside. You really have to let Kurt Farmer use his athletic ability, get him out on the perimeter, let him run the football, let him be that second running back in your backfield. Four wide receiver formation. Former great play action pass. Has a man, overthrows him. Cedric Henry was the closest person to that football. Kirk Farmer says, my bad. His receiver stopped. Check him out in the first half. You see him scrambling, running around, making something happen with his feet. He also has the ability to put the ball in there softly. We know that he has a strong arm. And play action. When you play action, you have to be a good faker of the football. Here he gets out of the pocket, gets the ball to a wide open receiver. Well, he said, my bad on that one. That sets up a third down and nine. Michigan State doesn't buy it. Garvin absolutely nowhere. Maybe picked up a yard on the play. Ronaldo Hill has started every game at Michigan State. The honorable mention Big Ten performer comes up for the stop. Well, if you're unblocked and they're going to run at you, you should make the tackle. That time Ronaldo Hill makes a good tackle. They don't have a guy assigned to block them. They had both receivers from that side going in to crack back block. You put a guy on Hill and you have a play. Gilpin, 45 yards a kick. So far this evening. Michigan State with a rush. Gilpin a high wobbly kick. Sean Foster. Fair catches at the 32-yard line. A 43-yard kick, and Michigan State will take over the football. Well, Justin Smith came up with the turnover, but Missouri could not take advantage. They still lead by three. Sophomore quarterback Kurt Farmer could not do anything after the Michigan State turnover, and the Spartans take over, trailing 10-3. 10-44 left to play in quarter number three. Michigan State, first and 10 from their own 34-yard line. Duckett and Moss in the backfield for the Spartans. Duckett, now a great play action fake. Pass is complete to Haygood. Close to the first down, but he'll pick up about nine on the play. Well, tomorrow on Fox NFL Sunday, join Terry, Howie, JB, and Chris as they take you around the NFL with the most entertaining hour of pregame football on TV Sunday. Jillian Barberi, the newest addition to the pregame gang, tells you where it's hot and where it's not. So kick off your Sunday with the only pregame show that has the guys who love football as much as you do Sunday. Pregame tomorrow at noon Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific on Fox. Well, Duckett will probably be talked about by Terry, Howie, Chris and J.B. in a couple of years as a running back in the NFL. Goes straight ahead. Third down, and they're going to mark it short, so it'll be about a half a yard to go. Big third down play for the Missouri defense. Michigan State 0 for 7 on third down possibilities tonight. And with talented tight ends like Baker and McCoy, you have to be very aware of the play action pass here. It bounces to the outside, has some running room. In the Missouri Territory, knocked out by Clarence Jones at the 49-yard line. The junior out of St. Louis. D.J. Duckett on the carry. And Duckett for a guy who played quarterback, linebacker in high school, and last year was a, a linebacker, and they moved him to running back kind of midway through the season. 
This ball player is supposed to go up inside. He does a nice job in bouncing it outside. You see the speed and the ability to just put that hand down and keep his feet and still turn the corner as guys are kind of nipping at his heels. He will be the best back Missouri's defense face all year. Duck it below setback. Three wide receiver package. Duckett trying to follow behind his blocks, but the breaks down, and he is going to lose two on the play. Guess who is in on the tackle? 96. And it's all about speed when you pull those guys, you run that OT tackle trap, you're getting those offensive linemen out in front. Here's a guy at the point of attack who wards off about three or four people, but you see the pursuit coming from the backside. You know, he has to get blocked. You have yeah. to get him blocked. That's the first objective of your offense. Locate Justin Smith, then block him. His nickname is Godzilla, and the coaches say he can still get better. Loss of two, second and 12. Nice play action fake. Smoker dumps it off to his tight end, Chris Baker, and he picks up maybe two on the play, getting back to the original line of scrimmage. Nice defensive effort by Gary Anthony, the strong safety out of St. Louis. And when you make first team all Big 12 and you garner a reputation, <laughs> you get triple team. Yeah. And that's a high-low block. That's illegal. He was engaged high. Then they go down and cut him. That is an illegal block. You could throw a flag on that and get a 15-yard penalty. They're trying to outlaw that, and it is for a safety reason. Number one, Duckett didn't know that guy was coming at him, but still, you have to stay up high. John Foster has checked into the lineup. He's wide left with Haygood. Richardson is coming after time. him. Here they come. Goodbye. Smoker takes a seat. Now, see, I don't get it. I don't care who else creeps up along the line of scrimmage. You had three guys block him last play. This time, no one lays a hand on him. And Justin Smith, if you don't block him, he's going to make plays. He was six sacks away from setting the Missouri record. Boy, he just makes Euless Booker whiff, but we're going to get an offside penalty. They might have lined up offside. And am I supposed to go? And if I do go, who has coverage behind me? Now the officials coming to the near side of the field, and I think they're going to, they haven't put 804 on the clock yet. It's still 800. Well, they can hold the clock for four seconds while we play. I think so. So the official is going to reach out and touch someone. <laughs> it doesn't work. <laughs> we can relate to that. This should actually play into the hands of Missouri because they get that extra tick to identify the formation. You see Ricky Huntley has actually walked out onto the field. He's given Doyle some information. This is what you do against this set because you have a certain blitz call. You get a certain look. You have automatic checks. Talk about the offense being able to check an audible line at the line of scrimmage. The mm -hmm. defense has just as many checks. Larry Smith knew that his team would bounce back from that Clemson game. 1972, as Kevin Frazier mentioned earlier, after a humiliating loss, they came back to beat nationally ranked Notre Dame. They're trying to repeat that 28 years later. Third down and five. Smoker, plenty of time, overthrows Baker. Just a hair out of his reach. And for every play, you have a positive and a negative. You have a positive reaction. Hold his breath. Plays incomplete. Oh, yeah, I like that one. But on the other side, we've got the guy open. Come on, throw it right here. Eyes getting big. And then kind of, oh, man, I don't want to let my guys know I'm not happy about that one. Special teams have been excellent tonight for both teams. And we have a whistle and a timeout, Missouri. They're going to talk about it. And as they talk it over, we'll take a break. 7.58 left to play in quarter number three. Missouri by a touchdown, and we will be back. Michigan State set to kick it away, facing fourth down and five. Jared has done a nice job tonight kicking the football. Missouri now backing off. They did have nine on the line of scrimmage. Josh Thornhill right in the middle for Michigan State, yelling out blocking assignments. Another nice kick. Did it hit him? Michigan
Michigan State. Let's see who they say. I think it may not have gotten them. It'll be Missouri's ball. Julian Jones almost touched the football, but it has been number 96 night Justin Smith. We talk about raising your level of play to meet the competition. This guy is exceeding the competition. You see a lot of busy work there. The play starts off one way. He's going the opposite direction. And getting to the quarterback is really what this guy is all about. Able to make people miss. There he's stuffing the run, fights through it, drags down T.J. Duckett. And you see the chin strap moves a little bit. You see that little buzz cut. <laughs> And he's an all-academic guy, so, you know, he's probably thinking some poetry right now. Ah, uh, yeah. 3.5 grade point average for Mr. Smith. Already with a sack, a forced fumble. But Missouri has the ball on their own three-yard line. Zach Abram busts through, crossing the five up to the seven-yard line. Let's go to our college football Saturday studios for a Dr. Pepper game break with Kevin Frazier. Ron, in the last scheduled game of the series, Pitt and Penn State playing in Pittsburgh, and John Thurman finds Rod Rutherford, and he will not stop till he gets enough. Pitt shuts out Penn State 12 to nothing. Penn State is 1 and 3. It's their worst start since 83. Oh, Kevin, you know how to make a guy from Pittsburgh smile. Over the right side, and again, it is Zach Abram. Walt Harris has done such a great job at Pitt, and I think people in Pennsylvania are scratching their head about uh, the Nittany Lions. Sometimes you forget about the center. We talked about him, redshirt freshman A.J. Rucker. He has really stepped up his play. Larry Smith talked about it. He's been the biggest surprise on this ball club because mm -hmm. for a redshirt guy to come in, play that position, a very physical position, but also the mental stress because he's calling blocking assignments. He's getting the linemen to look at what the defense is giving them and putting them in the right situations. And he comes from a solid high school program, Clyde High School in Spring, Texas. And there's a big Spring, Texas, but that's going yeah. to be just regular Spring. <laughs> just regular Spring. Third down. Farmer keeps it play action. First down, Missouri. Complete to the fullback, Jason Lewis. Coming into this game, the fullbacks didn't have a reception or a carry for Missouri. They're just not even used in this offense. We just mentioned A.J. Rucker. Look at the cockeyed nose. He goes the opposite direction. He gets enough of his man. Jason Lewis, you can't talk about this guy enough. He's a walk-on. Former high school quarterback. He's moved from linebacker to fullback. You know, he just came on campus, wanted to get an education. He's learning something tonight. People from Nob Nostra, Missouri are proud of him. Missouri straight ahead running. Fumble. The ball is loose. Still loose, and Michigan State has it. Jabari Hendricks looks like he has come up with the football. I think that might be Nick Myers, number 75. Now Myers has it. Nick Myers out of Springfield, Ohio. And you always see guys a little extra effort, fighting, churning. He covered the ball up, and then that big call from number 99, Dimitri Bernard, comes in there and just knocks the ball out. What a break. This is what killed... Missouri last week versus Clemson. Ball security and turnovers. But it's about dealing with adversity, your defense. You go out there, you play defense. No matter where you go out on the football field, you see a little realignment here by Michigan State trying to get in the right formation. Play clock at five. Smoker keeps it. Looking, scrambling, has the corner, turns it inside the 20, inside the 15, down to the 10. Heads up play by the true freshman from Mannheim, Pennsylvania. Pick up a 12 on the play. You know what? When you play against T.J. Duckett, you have to be aware of him. It starts with the play action. He goes this way. The defense flows that way. Once he gets to the outside, he realizes, I can throw it, but I can run it. And running is safer than throwing that ball down in this red zone. Good downfield blocking by the wide receivers of Michigan State. Duckett straight ahead inside the 10, down to about the seven yard line, pick up a three. They cannot get a first down. It was first and goal from that 10 yard line. Larry Smith has been plagued with turnovers. Nine turnovers, 41 points. That uh, is the story of the Clemson game. You know what? 41 points off of nine turnovers is not bad. 
for a season. Yeah. No, <laughs> you, I mean, you turn the ball over nine times, you give up a lot more than 41 points off of the normal. They were giving them up in short fields. They also had problems last week with the punt game. Moker running the option, pitches to Duckett. Inside the five, and he walks in for the touchdown. Taking advantage of the Missouri fumble, it didn't take Michigan State long to score. And patience, look how long Smoker was able to hold on to that ball. He ran from the right half to the left half before he tossed the ball back to Duckett. The defense concentrated on him, forgot about Duckett. You cannot forget about T.J. Duckett. Schaefer, four for four at extra point attempts last week. He hits the goal post, but it squeaks through. Great block by Dewan Moss on that touchdown that allowed Duckett to get in, but this was what set it up. Zach Abram with the fumble, and that allowed Michigan State to knock this game up at 10. T.J. Duckett this evening, 88 yards rushing the football. He's his second rushing touchdown of the year, and that allowed Michigan State to tie up the Missouri Tigers at 10. Three plays, 27 yards, less than a minute after the fumble. So they had great field position. They took advantage of it. Again, David Schaefer out of Birmingham, Michigan, set to kick it off. Ricardo Reed Rhodes. And Marcus James from Missouri back to receive it. James. Spinning, running. Up to the 21-yard line, and that is where Missouri will take over. Yeah, one of the good plays tonight, David Schaefer gets a little lucky here. He just caroms this ball off the side pocket <laughs> into the corner pocket. Did he call bank? I bet he did. Okay. I bet he did. Even before he lined up, he said, I'm going to bank this one. How to make an extra point exciting for the Missouri offense. You fumbled the last time. These guys are back in this football game. How important is this possession, not from a scoring standpoint, but just from a confidence standpoint? I think it's vital that Kurt Farmer is able to move his ball club down the field, use all of his ability. And there is part of his ability, the scrambling, crossing the 25 up to about the 27, and turnovers were a big factor last week versus Clemson. You take those six turnovers in those two kicking games, that costs us 42 points. And therein lies the football game. And, and as we told our players, heck, if, if Clemson had come out and done that with us, we'd have been on the other end of it too, because I don't care how good of a team you are, you can't overcome that type of thing. Well, let's see if they can overcome this type of thing tonight. Pickup of six on the play, second and four. Farmer rolling out, has a man, can't get the ball to him. Intended for Eric Spencer, just out of his reach. And not an easy pass for Farmer. He fakes to his right, then he rolls out to his left, throwing a front. You want to get your hips turned, you want to get your shoulders turned, and it needs to be a more accurate pass than that, but he's also trying to keep the ball away from the defensive back because you don't want another turnover, and he's trying to play smart. And that's a hard thing to do when that adrenaline is flowing and you know that you need to make a play because you haven't made one since the first half. Three wide receivers in the lineup. Again, Farmer checking at the line of scrimmage. Plenty of time to snap it. Looking to flare it out. It is Gilmore. He is going to be stacked up at the 25, and he will lose two yards on the play. Excellent defensive effort by Josh Thornhill of Michigan State. Could you imagine being down in this and what it must sound like on the field? Got some serious pad popping there. Thornhill leading the charge, the junior out of Lansing, Michigan. He's the leader of that defense. John Foster standing out his 35. Gilpin just about 45 yards a kick tonight. Not quite as high. Foster at his 33. Looking for some running room. Here he goes. One man to beat, and he trips. Excellent.
excellent return by Sean Foster. He was only averaging just over 12 and a half yards of return coming into this game. That was his best by far of the season. Good. Starts with the ability to hold the gunners up. You see number four trying to get down the field. Jones, Doyle, these guys are starters. Justin Smith, these guys are playing every snap on defense. They have to be getting a little fatigued. They've been on the field a lot this second half. This offense has not given the defense time to sit down and catch their breath. This is a dangerous possession for the Tigers right here. 25 yards on the return. Special teams again rearing its ugly head on Missouri. Smoker fakes, looking deep, has a man, under throws him, passes incomplete, penalty flag is thrown. Larry Holland Quest is the culprit. Pass was intended for Lavelle Richardson. And Larry Holland Quest read the route. It's a short stop and go by Lavelle Richardson. Not a great route. He's in good position. He doesn't look back soon enough. He gets tangled up with the wide receiver. He has a chance if he puts on the brakes where he can actually make this play. Are defenders looking at the receiver's eyes at that point? Because he didn't even turn around. They're looking at their eyes, but they're still scared to death that if they turn around and turn too late, that they won't pick up the ball at all. Of course, the college football rule, a little different than the NFL rule. It's actually marked off yardage-wise. Larry Smith got the fingers crossed. His defense has played extremely well. They've only given up 213 yards so far. Smoker across the middle to the tight end. Pass is complete to Baker. He gets down to the 10-yard line. Pickup of 18 on the play. And if you're committed to stopping the run, you'll get burned by the play-action pass. Missouri up trying to stop that run, trying to create something at the line of scrimmage. I forget all about Baker, but they do a nice mm -hmm. job in tackling him after he catches the pass. We know how dangerous he is after he catches it, but they took him down right away. First and ten. They can get a first down. They need to get down to the one. Duck it. Right side. Nothing doing. Pat Mingucci in on things. Also, Sean Doyle, the Sam linebacker out of Overland Park, Kansas. Right in the middle, 2P Pico. He goes to help out on number 77, Mingucci, and he gets run by right behind his back. Sometimes you have to keep your head on a swivel. You're thinking the double team, uh -huh. but you're also responsible for that linebacker scraping through the hole. Good, smart play by Missouri to recognize that and read it early. Michigan State, 100-plus in the second half. Smoker running for his life. He's going to get rid of it. Almost complete. Going high for the pass was Richardson. He's 6'2". He needed to be about 6'6". But once again, it boils down to pressure and pursuit. Sometimes you get fooled early on a play and you give up. These guys have no give up in them. And the guy who's chasing them, making them throw that ball high, of course, is number 96, Justin Smith. I think if you're Missouri, you're thinking that uh, Jeff Smoker is going to throw it out of bounds and just get rid of it because he's scrambling. But that was close to a completion and a touchdown. Fourth play of the drive. You can see just over a minute and 10. And it's a big third down play for Michigan State. One of nine on third down. Oh, they got two guys moving right there. That's got to be a penalty. Nope. There's the flag. A late flag. Intercepted by Missouri. Gary Anthony with his first pick of the year. Second for the team. Line just threw his flag. Two men in motion. This will be declined. Of course. What a break defensively for Missouri. How do you get all that hair under that helmet? It's not a break. You make your break. You get good coverage. You stay in the hole. You stay in that position. Once again, look at the state coaches. They're thinking we're going to get in the end zone. It's just a frustration level. They can't believe he threw that ball late down the middle. Herb Hagen was the intended receiver. And Missouri dodges a bullet. We are inside of three minutes. That looks like a 70s dude, doesn't it? I think Eric used to have one of those. It's retro day, baby. Keep it on the ground, Gilmore. Abram fumbled a couple of possessions ago. That allowed Michigan State into the ball game. In case you just joined us, a wild opening to this football game. Missouri.
didn't even do their pregame warm-ups on here on the field here at Crow Field. They were across the street at their practice facility. They bust over with about oh, five, six minutes till kickoff, and their first four or five plays were something out of somebody else's playbook. Five wide receivers. Farmer over the middle. Very safe pass. Complete to Dwayne Blakely. There's been a lot of momentum changers in this game. Eric Clemens, I'll tell you what, team that has the ball last may be the team that wins. Absolutely. I tell you, this stadium, 60,000-plus, quiet, especially when Michigan State had that nice punt return and looked at, like they were going to score. Everybody right back into this game now after that big interception in the end zone. So, Mo on Mizzou's side. Third down and two, Eric. Farmer just dumps it off, and he takes a hit right after he releases the football. Jay Saylor out of McHenry, Illinois, came down on him hard. But another golden opportunity by Missouri, wasted. Third down, you're on schedule. You only need three. You can't convert after the interception. Once again, the defense of Missouri going to spend a lot of time on the field here in the third quarter. And we saw a lot of gimmicks and, and razzle-dazzle from Missouri early. It's time to go back into that bag of tricks. I think you're right. Gilpin's done his part. drive kick back to the 20. John Foster nothing going this time. 53 yards on the kick. Next week starts your college football Saturday with the pregame show presented by Rivals.com at 1130 a.m. Eastern 830 a.m. Pacific. And then at 330 Eastern it's a triple header action starting with number 14 UCLA visiting Pac-10 rival Oregon, followed by Houston at number five, Texas, then Cal versus Fresno State. That's right here next Saturday on Fox Sports Net. We had a penalty flag and maybe picked up. There's no flag on the play. Of course, the home fans boo that decision. It, it could have been a flag that was potentially thrown against them, but they don't know that. They don't care. There are some carefree students right there. There you go. Token crowd shot. Larry Smith has to be very proud of this effort by his football team. And you talk to the people here in Columbia, and it is no secret that after last week's game, the rumbling started about Coach Smith. But he told us yesterday very up front, I've never worried about that. I can't worry about that. I just need to get my football team ready to play football. First and 10 from their own 33 for the Spartans. Duckett tries to get outside. Excellent pursuit. He is dropped for a loss of three, possibly four. Jamonte Robinson out of St. Petersburg, Florida, is the man who made the stop. And Jamonte Robinson, you see him with number 55 on his chest. Well, he could have a number 25 on because this kid is only 6'2", 203 right. pounds on a good day. So he's probably sweated away those extra four pounds that put him over 200 pounds. He's the size of a strong safety playing at that outside linebacker position. Great speed, able to run things down. They call it their eagle package with Robinson, Harden, and Smith. Ten guys on the line of scrimmage. Missouri brings everybody. Smoker steps up. Has a man overthrows him. Penalty flag. They're going to call that interception. I think they're going to call that holding and not interference. Oh, he did my. grab a hold of a little bit of jersey. Pat Mingucci had great penetration. And it is going to be holding. Good call, James. Well, let's take a look at the quarterback and the receiver. And it's about disruption. You want to disrupt the quarterback's timing. You want to disrupt the wide receiver at the line of scrimmage. There we see good coverage. You see a little hand there. And this receiver didn't even look like he was running. That's not a lot of holding because no. he's not impeding his process. But the hand was on the back of the jersey. Unfortunate call mm. against the Tigers. But a good thing if you're here rooting for the Spartans today. And there are not a lot of Spartan faithful in this auditorium today. I thought there'd be a lot the way our hotel was full. I think they may still be back at the yeah. hotel party. Well, Julian Jones was flagged on that play. Play action. They fake to duck it. Smoker, look out from behind. He has to scramble. Cuts inside, and he's going to be upended at the 45-yard line. Pick up a five on the play. Justin Smith again on the stop. You know, it's not easy chasing a mobile quarterback around. 
this defense is working. It's not a big substitution defense. You're seeing almost the same 11 guys out there snap after snap, but they're staying after it. I mean, they're in a ball game. Everyone in town around campus thought they were going to get blown out. The guys are going to class during the week. They hear the snickering. They hear the grumbling. Yeah. These guys are after it tonight. On second and five, straight ahead running the football. Justin Smith stacking up Duckett. And he will be marked about a foot short of the 50, which is where he needed to get to our yellow line for the first down. And that's the end of three quarters of play from Columbia, Missouri. Michigan State against Justin Smith and the Missouri Tigers. We head to the final 15, tied at 10. Missouri only 38 yards offensively in quarter number three, and they head to quarter number four, tied with Michigan State at 10, along with James Lofton, I'm Ron Thule. And if you're a Missouri fan or Larry Smith, after last week, you have to be pleased, but you can't play to not lose at this point. And I think for us, we're kind of selfish up here because we have ourselves a game, and if you're the Missouri Tigers, you're in a ball game. You want to play to win. You don't want to play not to lose this ball game. You want to remain competitive. We talked about maybe going into that bag of tricks for one offensive play because you really do need a touchdown to win this ball game. I don't think right. it's going to come down to a field goal kicking contest. Both teams are explosive on offense. We've seen it from Missouri early on in the ball game, and we know what T.J. Duckett is capable of doing. You just don't want Missouri to get too conservative offensively. Michigan State with a foot to go for a first down. Smoker will keep it. Now, last week on his quarterback sneaks versus Marshall, Smoker really didn't bury himself behind the big centers. He kind of stood up high, and I'm surprised Missouri didn't see that on tape because he didn't look like he buried himself that much on that quarterback sneak. I thought he was still in high school. I think he really, <laughs> I mean, this is the guy last year who half of the defensive linemen he played against, he was probably bigger then. That's right. Now he's going up against guys who weigh 290, 300, guys who are big enough when they sit on him, they'd really hurt him like that guy right there. The Missouri defense has been on the field a lot here in the second half. They own the time of possession in the first half. Duckett is going to be wrapped up. Gary Anthony out of St. Louis, just a sophomore. He's coming off a solid spring. But Gary Anthony's a strong safety. We talked about Missouri trying to become aggressive on offense. That time they're aggressive on defense. They bring the song strong safety. That means there's one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. But what you're saying is we're going to get to you before you can get it the way downfield. And we're going to disrupt your blocking scheme by blitzing, by bringing those fire zones, coming at you, being aggressive. You have to be aggressive in this ballgame. On second and nine for the Spartans. Smoker steps up in the pocket. Hit as he releases. Man wide open. Complete down to the 25 to Herb Haygood. Pick up a 24 on the play. Now, I wonder if that pass is on the money if it's not the assist by Justin Smith because he gets hit, doesn't get everything into it. This ball is a little bit end over end. During duck season, all the hunters <laughs> pull their guns out and go after this thing, but it lines up right perfectly in the wide receiver's hands. Larry Hollenquist, who had a pass interference call earlier, was on the coverage. The cornerbacks need to look up for Missouri. First and 10 for Michigan State on the 25. Straight ahead running behind the big offensive line, T.J. Duckett. Behind the big center, C.E.T. Go ahead, go the ahead. Tupe Peco. You, you got away from it. You got Tupe Peco. A big guy they didn't know can play center. Big number 74 and said they let him snap the ball. He fired off and Morris Watts, the offensive coordinator, saying, gee, we never saw that before. Yeah, and they had him at left tackle starting last year. Came from junior college. He said, told me before the ball game, I played at a bad high school. That's why nobody wanted me out of high school. Missouri defense stacking up Duckett, picking up maybe two on the place, bringing up a third down situation. Plenty of time left. But Missouri's given themselves chances. You're giving yourself 
you're not letting them rattle off big first downs. Mo Akini, the defensive coordinator, he had a plan coming to this ballgame. We always talk about offensive coordinators, them scripting plays, being very uh, creative and, and very inventive. They've done the same thing on defense. They shot the gaps. They've called the right defense in the right situation. They haven't let people run wide open. The coverage has been there a few times. The defensive back have failed to make the plays, but they've been in position to make the plays. Nice play of the drive, third down and four. Duckett looking for a 100 yards rushing. He's got it, and he also has the first round down. He just gets behind that line, and his 252 pounds of muscle just keep barreling over everybody. We talked in the open. If you're Justin Smith, the thing you have to be wary of is guys attacking you. See, he's even dropping back into coverage there. And they're coming directly at him because they are trying to negate his speed. But that time, talks about that fire zone. Someone else comes and he backs off into cover. Michigan State, a golden opportunity. Duck it 103 yards, one touchdown. He's joined by Dewan Moss in the backfield, first and 10. Ball on the 13 yard line. Nothing doing. Loss of two on the play is Danny McCamey coming up from that defensive tackle spot, the senior out of St. Joseph, Missouri. And sometimes your quarterback will wear a size 11 shoe, you wear a 13. Those two things added together. He just Oops. stubs his toe. Yep. But his quarterback almost came over too far, got in his way. But Duckett, with his vision, is trying to make that cut before he even gets the football. McCamey with great penetration. He got the start tonight ahead of Michael Gavins. Trying to make the most of it. We've got a Missouri player shaking up just a little bit. And a player who doesn't want to leave the field, number 29. Anthony. Gary Anthony. And the tough thing about that is when we look at our depth chart, we don't have a guy behind him. They have to now shuffle their defensive back because he really is their strong safety. These are only true strong safety. They'll bring another free safety in the ball game and put that guy at strong. Well, Clarence Jones was his backup. Well, if you want some news with a unique perspective, how about the Keith Olbermann Evening News? Sunday Night Sports just got a whole lot better. He gives us his unique perspective. That's tomorrow at 10 p.m. only on Fox Sports Net. Check your local listings in your area. Second down. We call it 12. Smoker lets it fly. Tick to the last second intended for Lavelle Richardson Larry Hollingquist they've been picking on him tonight but Justin Smith had the penetration again on the young freshman you get pressure on the quarterback you throw his timing off it changes everything down the field you see how close he is to that sideline that out should have been thrown earlier of course Justin Smith is there. He makes Smoker shuffle his feet. Smoker does a nice job in pocket movement, getting away from the pass rush. But the ball is late. You get a hand in there, and you get a nice defensive play. Now that sets up third and 12. You get a sack here. You push him back in field goal range. Last time in the red zone, they were intercepted. They keep it on the ground. Straight ahead. He will not get the first down. Duckett plowing his way towards the 10-yard line. This has been an exciting football game. Eric Clemens, how about giving us a quick recap? Hey, our best game of the year so far, guys, and you can see statistically, well, Michigan State, 10 unanswered points give credit to their malign defense somewhat. T.J. Duckett already over 100 yards. Look at the second half differential. State with 148 total yards to 38, guys. Schaefer will attempt the field goal, Eric. We'll call it a 27-yarder. The ball's down, the kick. And that'll split the uprights. Schaefer, a perfect four of four kicking field goals this year, a 27-yarder. And for the first time, Michigan State, number 22 in the country, has the lead. James Marcus. Welcome back to Columbia, Missouri. Number 22, Michigan State has finally taken over the lead thanks to Schaefer's 27-yard field goal. 13 to 10 is our score. Plenty of time left, 10-48 left in the ballgame. Missouri dominated the first half in every way, shape, or form, but Michigan State was only down by a touchdown at halftime. Marcus James and Ricardo Rhodes set to return this kick. James will bring it out. 
Ripped up at the 15, gets up to the 17, the 18 yard line. Demario Suggs, he is a headhunter on the kickoff team for Michigan State. But you can't make the mistake on the other end. Three yards deep, you know you're supposed to keep it in. See, Suggs saw the kick going deep. He's easing up a little bit. They bring it out. They play right into the hands of Michigan State. Not only do you lose a couple yards in field position, but your offense is standing on the sideline going, what is he doing bringing it out? What is he doing that for? Well, since the first half ended, Missouri has been out, uh, as far as time of possession, minus nine minutes compared to what Michigan State's had the football. Zach Abram, he is wrapped up by Jay Saylor. And a lot of that time differential goes back to the turnover. You don't have a chance to complete right. your drive. They would have had a first Maybe down there. The Maybe they run off a couple more plays. Look at Michigan State scoring drive, 14 plays, 58 yards. Take up almost six minutes of clock time, and Bobby Williams looks a little more relaxed on the sideline now. Second down and five. Missouri on schedule, not for long. Stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. It'll be Zach Abron again. Josh Thornhill made the first hit. And I think I, you remember back, oh, 10 years or so ago, that Michigan State was known as a team that sometimes self-destructed when a game was close. And I think one of the things this team has shown us the last couple of years is they are so resilient to adversity. Kudos to Bobby and, and the coaching staff. Well, Bobby talked about the fact that we have the belief that we can beat anybody. Their, their goal, their objective coming into this year was to be a top-tier program, to be a BCS team. Maybe they're a few strides away from that, but still that belief that you can win when you're down 10-0 on the road has to be important to this program. Third down and two has been a thorn in their side tonight. Nice fake. Farmer looking. Pass complete to the 40, to the 50, down to the 45-yard line. Dwayne Blakely, the big tight end. Now, Kellen Winslow may be the most favorite tight end in Missouri history, but Dwayne Blakely is the tight end of the moment. Big play. You're letting Kurt Farmer use his athletic ability. They have to respect his ability when he runs out of the pocket. Jabari Hendricks, number six, comes up. No one in coverage. Big tight ends make big problems when they're wide open. That is Blakely's third reception of the evening. He has been quiet, but what a time to come up with one. Good play calling by Bill Cuban. You can see the turf being thrown up as Zach Abram is wrapped up by Drew Young, the senior out of East Riverside, California, from that Will linebacker spot. Look at the way Zach Abram is built, though. I mean, yeah. there's not a spare inch on his body. Every inch is muscled up. You know, he, there's no way he's 5'11". You know, he would like to grow to be 5'11 one day. <laughs> and but there's not a lot of running room up front for that little no. trap that they're running either. Now Missouri hurrying things up. Three wide receivers to the left. There was movement. Penalty flag is thrown. Farmer's going to scramble, and he's going to run out of bounds, and he takes a hit, and that's a yeah, penalty you flag. See, you see the flag, the hat come off of the referee. He had already thrown his flag at the outset of the play. He recognized that late hat. He said, I don't have a backup flag. I throw my hat up in the air. Well, there was a movement call against. He better keep the hat on. Well, I tell you what, that kind of reminds us of what happened to Kirk Farmer last year versus Iowa State. This is tonight's last run by Farmer. And he's all the way out of bounds. Josh Thornhill is the one who nailed him. And then last year versus Iowa State, game number five, seen right here on Fox Net. He's rolling out, rolling out, bam, and the leg was broken. And then he had to be carried off the field, and he gave the thumbs up and the number one sign to everybody. He is one tough cookie, and when healthy, he is a tremendous athlete. And we're going to get an explanation because we had multiple fouls on the play. There are two fouls on the play. Illegal formation on the offense. That's a five-yard penalty marked off. And we have a dead ball, personal foul, late hit out of bounds, 15 yards, automatic first foul. We need a calculator here, don't we? I think I got that one. You got, oh, you're a Stanford but, guy, though. Let me do that. You had a... 15 <laughs> minus the five, which gives the coach a big headache. I think we got that down. The bottom line, it's a first and 10 for Missouri. They haven't had a whole lot of first downs this half. That is only their fourth. 
They're on the Michigan State 35-yard line. Bouncing to the outside. Zach Abram trying to make lemonade out of lemons. Drew Young wrapping him up. Pickup of maybe a yard on the play. Second down and nine inside of eight minutes. Missouri led 10-3 at the end of the first half. We were tied at 10 going into the fourth quarter. Michigan State now with the advantage. Missouri content to just keep the ball on the ground. Running on the right side, Zach Abram. There is the man, Brad Hamrick, made his first field goal attempt from 25 yards out. He may be asked to tie this game up. He is two for two this year. His longest was 35. You've got just above seven minutes to play in this ball game. You're faced with a third and seven. Is this four down territory for Larry yeah. Smith? Well, I'll tell you what. You can see this is the seventh play of the drive. It's consumed three and a half minutes now. He needs this third down if he wants to keep this thing alive. This may be out of hammer train. Farmer rolling has a man passes incomplete. You know, if you're a smart defensive back, you understand down and distance, and Ronaldo Hill is a smart defensive back. You cannot just go to the down and distance markers if you're Travis Garvin, number nine, and expect the guy to lay off of you. He's breaking on that ball more than you are. You have to give yourself a chance. To me, that's a great chance to go out and up because they're biting on everything. They're coming down. Bill Cubitt has gone into a little bit of a shell. Now they're going to line up and try a 50-yard field goal. His career long is 48. Jared Gilpin, the punter, is the holder. This is 50. To tie the game up. It does not have enough juice. Kicking a 50-yarder and kicking a 35-yarder, James, there is so much difference, the trajectory and everything. You could just hear from the sound. He didn't get all of it. Michigan State stays on top. It has been a great effort by both ball clubs tonight, but Missouri now 6.57 left in the ball game, trailing by three. This is why Hamrick missed the field goal. Well, you get a little bit of a juggle there, but watch his plant foot. Look how far in front of the ball it is. The ball comes off a little low. He doesn't get everything into it, and it doesn't sail enough to get above the crossbar. Snap was a little bit to the inside, and it took Gilpin a second to get the ball down. Two tight ends for Michigan State. This is Duckett's kind of ball game. When Missouri is up to the challenge, dropping them back at the 30-yard line, a loss of three. Now, if you think it's T.J. Duckett time, and I think that it's T.J. Duckett time, and everybody in this stadium thinks that it's T.J. Duckett time, well, you know what? It is not T.J. Duckett time. It is just smoker time. You fake the ball. You let your quarterback run around to the side. You have two great tight ends. Those tight ends do that seal block, and you bootleg to the outside. That is the obvious call. You got a great two tight end set in. There's a tight end who's going to go in motion. Duck it again, right side. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. We saw a moment ago Justin Smith complaining of Missouri. I think he may have thought he was held on that last play. Well, I, I, think, still you're, I think you're held every play. You <laughs> want to get the official's attention before it becomes a critical play. They're holding me. They're holding me. They've been holding me since the first quarter. You've called it once. It's time to call it again. You, know, you, you say it in a polite way. Exactly, sir. Now we've seen the maturation process of Justin Smith. He just bull rushed everybody his freshman year, and he's learning this game, and he is going to be some kind of player on Sundays. Third down and eight for Michigan State. Baker the tight end. Missouri rushes six. Nothing doing. Duckett is going to be wrapped up. Julian Jones coming up from the H-back spot. Justin Smith in on that. You got plenty of time on the clock. Above five minutes, two timeouts for Missouri. Justin Smith, you try and run at him. Oh, but my. he's tough enough. I mean, you got a guy, 305 pounds, coming to block him and Matt Biondo, but he can't knock him out of the way. He just takes guys and kind of throws them out of the way till he gets to the ball carrier, doesn't he? Marcus James back for Jared's kick. And it is a dandy. James is retreating back to his six-yard line. 
tries to stiff arm his way up to the 16, and he's not going anywhere. And that's Suggs on the tackle. We've talked about him on special teams all night long. Craig Jarrett with a 59-yard punt. Justin Smith doing his job, and can his offense tie this up? We'll be back. Could be the same for both these teams tonight under the full moon here in Columbia, Missouri. Along with Eric Clemens and James Lofton, I'm Ron Thulin as we head to our final four minutes and 54 seconds. The number 22 team in the country, Michigan State, leading Missouri by three. And Missouri 88 yards away from taking the lead in this ballgame. Palmer swings it out to the 20-yard line, up to the 22-yard line to Travis Garvin. Now for a Dr. Pepper game break, let's go to our college football Saturday studios with Kevin Frazier. Ron, how about this one? There's a party up in Manhattan, Kansas, because Kansas State all over Ball State, seventh-ranked team in the land, putting up huge numbers, 511 total yards. They lead 76 to zip in the fourth quarter. I guess you can say Kansas State having a ball tonight. Why are they throwing deep? And they're hit by 70 points. The object of the game is to score. <laughs> Second down and two, Zane Gilmore straight ahead for the first down. Nobody has left the seats here at Perot Field. Crowd of 55,000 on hand. And this drive, do you expect Bill Cubitt, the offensive coordinator, to become conservative? Use the clock. Use your expertise and tell us. Well, I like Kurt Farmer on first down calling the audible. He saw the one-on-one -on -one matchup outside. We've got the trick formation again. They've been very successful with this. Don't forget Stanford, Texas coming your way next. Here's the pass to Justin Gage, but he is dropped. He threw that the last time in the first quarter for a big gain. This time, Demario Suggs was right there, the senior out of Toledo, Ohio. Well, he's going to throw it again. He's going to throw it up top to Blakely, the tight end who's going to go down the field. Got too many arrows there, but you'll watch Blakely heading down the football field. That's where he wants to throw. He doesn't get the blocking up front by his fellow wide receivers. One of them fell down, and he got blasted. That's the distance Missouri has to go to take the lead in this game. They lost five on that play, second and 15 from the shotgun. Four-man rush, Farmer with time. He is dangerous here. Still scrambling. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage and gets about nine yards, maybe ten on the play. Most quarterbacks, once they scramble and they get near the boundary, they think, I need to get out of bounds, not Farmer. Farmer's thinking, where is the first down? He cuts back inside. His receivers have to become active players. There's Justin Gage. He's a former quarterback. He knows to protect his guys. And look at Farmer stumbling and bumbling for some extra yardage. Pick up a 13 on the play, third down and two. Farmer wasn't a throwing quarterback in high school. He was more of a running quarterback. Play action, Farmer overthrowing. Intended receiver, Eric Spencer. That'll bring up a fourth down play with 2.37 to go. What do you do? I think you put the ball in Farmer's hands. You give him the ability to get on the perimeter. Larry's kicking it. Or you take the ball. Oh, goodness. You know that you know they've got some gimmicks from this area. Well, we got to keep our eye on the fake. Gilpin, 45.6. He had a 53-yarder. Interesting call by Larry Smith, especially when you have a back like Duckett for Michigan State who can ground out the clock, and he does kick it. I don't see how you can possibly punt this ball away and expect to get it back. John Foster at the 21, and now they have good field position as they have it at the 34-yard line, and they only have to waste 226. Remember, on that field goal, they ran over five minutes off the clock just with a mix of running plays. Now, you have a great, courageous play by Kurt Farmer on the scramble. He gets you in position third and two. You have a so-so call, poor execution on the bootleg. You only give the quarterback one guy to throw the football to when he's out naked and then you strand your guys like this, this is not good football by Larry. Now the defense, the pressure is on them. They have been on the field the majority of the second half. They are a tired group, and Michigan State has worn them down. Duck it straight ahead. Timeout. If they burn it, they'll have one left. Clarence Jones from the strong safety spot on the stop. That call can be a season turner. 
they make the first down, you open up a bunch of possibilities. Just a reminder, coming up next, we'll send you out west. Steve Fiziak, Tom Ramsey, and Lisa Malowski are standing by in Palo Alto, California, as the Longhorns of Texas, number five in the country, take on the Cardinal of Stanford. You'll see Applewhite and Sims, Hodges Mitchell in the group, taking on Stanford. Coming up next, here on Fox Sports Net. Straight ahead running. Stop the clock. Even if you go three and out, you're still going to get the ball back after the punt with about 40 seconds to yep. play at best. Bobby Williams is going to call his troops over. Missouri burning the timeout. Harden was on the tackle. Cedric Harden having a nice game tonight. Things don't get easier for Michigan State. They will take on Notre Dame at home next week, a team they have beaten three straight games. Missouri, they've got, Missouri's got the week off, and then they head up to Lincoln, Nebraska to take on the Nebraska Cornhuskers, the top-ranked Cornhuskers. So right now, Larry Smith knows that this would be a confidence booster for his team. You can talk to the guys about stripping the ball, but what you also want you're going to have a quarterback who could possibly bootleg, get to the outside, so you want containment. You've got to accomplish two things. Number one, you want to stop Duckett up the middle, but you have to be wary of the quarterback faking it to Duckett and bootlegging it to the outside. And don't lose sight of this guy, number 83, Baker, the tight end. Yes. Well, we saw Duckett the workhorse last week against Marshall, and Baker also doing a job, and T.J. Duckett's been the workhorse here in the second half also. But if you're Michigan State and you throw that ball on third down and it's an incomplete pass, you stop the clock. So if you're going to run that bootleg, the instructions that you give your quarterback on the sideline is you make sure that you can complete it. If you can't complete it, you stay in the field of play. Third down and seven. This is the game. Have to get to our little yellow line. Duck it. Right side. He switches. He's got some room. Cuts into the 40, and he leans forward for the first down. What an effort by T.J. Duckett. And what a heartbreaking play for the Missouri right. Tigers defense. They have it stopped on the front side. Nothing short of Duckett's amazing athletic ability makes this play happen. We talk about signature plays for a guy's career. This won't go down as the greatest run in his career, but it is the biggest play of tonight's ball game. And now Larry Smith can do very little. What a huge play. Made the first down by a body yard. That is why he is an excellent bat. Straight up the middle, Duckett just blowing by a defeated Missouri defense. Or maybe deflated would be a better word. They have played such a wonderful game only to have him just taken away by T.J. Duckett's ability on that third down and seven. Kudos to T.J. Duckett. So Missouri that led the majority of this football game, at least through the first half, trailing 13 to 10, and they can't do anything. I don't even see why, if you're Michigan State, that you risk a handoff. You've seen them in their victory formation now. Take the ball, kneel down. And that is it. May have to run one more play. We'll see. Well, you get a timeout by Missouri. You, of course, That's stop it. the clock. You'd make them lead, snap the ball as many times as they have to. Bobby Williams will call his troops over and the timeout. 32 seconds left to be played. Michigan State showing what their team is really made of tonight. Missouri dipsy and doodling them early on. Playing some good football. Missouri racking up 356 yards. Michigan State 304, but Michigan State got the yardage they needed at the appropriate times. And we called for the trick play. We wanted the, the double pass again by Justin Gage. And you know what? Michigan State was ready for it. They penetrate. They sack him before he's able to, to throw the ball back to Blakely, the tight end. And those are the big plays in this ball game. Now, well, two big plays in this game. Missouri had a third down and two and they weren't able to come up with it. This was the third and two. Farmer rolling out, overthrowing his receiver, and then the play by T.J. Duckett. And this should do it.
Final snap of the game, and Jeff Smoker with his first collegiate start and extensive playing time for the injured Ryan Van Dyke. And Bobby Williams will remain undefeated as a head coach. He won in the Citrus Bowl last year, has a couple of wins under his belt. Larry Smith will see his troops fall to one and two. Good old-fashioned football game between the Big Ten and the Big 12. I think the score was old-fashioned. The method of yeah. play was anything but old-fashioned. Larry Smith pulling a lot out of the bag, keeping his team off the field before the game, coming out with some gimmicks. Had his guys really fired up, and I thought they played very well against a highly ranked opponent and really rebounded well last week after that loss at Clemson. So that's it from Columbia, Missouri, where the final score is Michigan State 13, Missouri 10 for James Lofton and Eric Clemens and our entire crew. I'm Rod Thulin. Thanks for watching. We send it now to the College Football Saturday studio for scores, highlights, and our next game. Kevin Frazier is standing by. Rod, thanks a lot, and welcome to our.